this is what I should be doing. You yeah. know, there's a market for this. I'm a painter by trade and yeah. a kind of painter by trade. So this is in my wheelhouse. I know Dude, how to that's a bread and butter, bro. Yeah, I know how to fit tires. I understand wheels. There's definitely a market for this. This hole, you know, panel shops spray full cars. They'll fix a dent. They'll do this. But I noticed that they didn't want to, they didn't want to do wheels, you know. They didn't want to rip the wheel off, put the car up, get the tires off, strip the weights, take all the dirt off the, the, the wheel, clean it, repair it, mm-hmm. sandblast it if need be. I noticed there was a massive hole in the market. So I, I pretty much just put it out to the boys. Like, I think I'm going to go, you know, I think I'm going to, this is my idea. And their dad said to me, that's, that's the best option for you, man. Welcome back to the Talk Motorsport Show, where we talk all things motorsport and video games. I'm Gavin, here with a new co-host. Hey guys, I'm Rahul, researcher at Talk Motorsport. Today joining us, we have Ricky, co-founder of Painted Auto Body Shop, based in Melbourne. That's me, your guys. I'm Ricky from uh, Painted in Melbourne, Kewa Park, and I'm here to talk all things cars. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yo, let's get into it, dude. So, so tell us about yourself. How'd you get into this industry? You know, after high school, what was what was the steps, man? What, what were you doing? Um, well, it started before high school, to be honest with you. Yeah, run me um, through. Dad, man. Dad was just the dude around cars. Yeah. He always had cars, always been around cars. So it was sort of just uh, bred into me, I suppose. It was just natural. Yep. That's all I really knew. Um, I went hi- went through high school and just plodded along, really, yeah. and worked for Dad on and off at his shop. Yep. Um, and, yeah, so that's basically how it started for me. It was just... In my family, my grandfather was always building cars. Dad was always building cars. We're always in the garage. Um, so yeah, basically, it's all I knew, man. Yeah, easy, yeah, bro. Yeah. I mean, going back to that though, so you didn't have to do any education. It was just like you just did school, wrapped up school, and just worked with the dad business straight into it. Yeah, no, re- no TAFE, nothing like that. No, nah, no TAFE. Um, dad was self-taught. Yeah. Uh, taught by his old man, yep. um, just passed along, you know, and then it was uh, same for me. I just watched it from a young age and just noticed that it was such a cool thing to do, creating something out of out of nothing, basically. You 100%. Know? Something completely wrecked and ready for the tip, ready for the dump. 100%. And then it, it, give it a few months, a few hours of work, and um, it comes back to life. And the result is just, you know, amazing to see it. What type of work were you doing? Like, run us through, like, the type of jobs you were doing then versus now. Not so much. Not so much. Dad was doing full restorations, so yeah. ground up, nut and bolt, um, the car stripped down to just the frame, basically. So you guys aren't doing volume production. You're doing, like, one car, yeah, three months. Yeah, a couple cars a year. Yeah. Um, yeah, total rebuilds from the ground up, which were long-winded, took a long time. Um, and, yes. Yeah. What was life looking like for you outside of school? You know, this is everything before painted. Like, how did you get to painted phase? Okay. To get to painted was, uh, it was actually a, a, a long road, to be honest with you. There yeah. was lots of um, veering off, taking different directions, getting a bit distracted when you're young. When I left high school, I was really intrigued by music. Music was my, it was just, I just fell in love with yeah. it, you know? Um, and I started making music. I bought myself a, a, a MacBook. And yeah. started making uh, dance music. Ended up getting a club gig at the age of 16, straight out of high school. So I, crazy. I, I, I dropped out in year 10. And, um, you thought that was your life? Yeah, I thought, I thought yeah. music was it, man. Like, this is what I, I want to do. Music runs in my family. My mum's a professional singer, was a professional singer. My grandfather, same thing, over in Spain. They had restaurants and they were dancers and singers. So it, it, it was just part of life when we were yeah. growing up, you know? So I started making music and I thought, this is it. This is what I want to do, you know? Yeah. So I was uh, going into clubs when I was 16, 17 with a fake ID, <laughs> showing the, the security guard a fake ID, yep. getting in, you know? Yeah. And uh, Classic. Playing, playing DJ gigs at yep. 17 and thinking, you know, this is absolutely... What, cool. were you, what were your rates? What are you charging? Oh, at the time, man, it was crazy. Fresh out of high school, we are getting like $100 an hour, $200 an hour, right. you know? At 16, you probably think... At 16, at we were 16, like, that's like, like a, world. That's yeah, like yeah, 10K yeah. today, it bro. Was <laughs> it was massive. Not only that, it was my first taste of like... Uh, being involved in a community and something, yeah. you know, it, it, riding a wave and like 100%. really, um, yeah, really pouring pouring my artistic self into something. It was the first experience I had artistically, 100%. you know. Yeah, and getting feedback from people on your song, on your music, or on your DJ set, it's like instant gratification. Hundred percent. You got five hundred or four hundred people at your fingertips. Yeah, and you're controlling it, their emotions from go to woe. You yeah. Know? So that was my first like taste of sort of uh, out of high school, doing my own thing. Yeah. Um, dad wasn't too happy about uh, me doing music. Wasn't sustainable for him? No, nah, I didn't think it was sustainable. Yeah. Didn't think it was like uh, viable for the rest of, rest of my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. He wanted me to do cars. But it wasn't sustainable for you to carry on doing that and your dad wasn't fond of it, was he? No, nah, dad wasn't fond of it. 
uh, purely because everything else that came with the music and the, yeah. the clubbing scene. The lifestyle. Know? Yeah, yeah the lifestyle is pretty wild. Um, you're getting offered every drug under the sun. Yeah. Everything is like on the table. Yep. Nothing's off limits, you know. Mm. So um, you can lose yourself quite easily in that world, which I did, you know. Yeah. For a few years there, I went, went way, way off track, was chasing this. I mean, it's tough, right? Oh, it's what, tough, what, 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 what age are we? 17, 18? 17. Yeah, 17. Dude, we're, we're, um, at that time, we're like probably just trying to feed our egos and trying to like fit Literally, in, man. You literally. Know? And, you've, and I left high school and the thing was, it was sort of like, um, it, happened, it all happened so fast so the ego can start to build sometimes being too overly confident. And even if you know that you've got it, you don't need to let everyone know that you've got it, you know? No, you don't. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. just do the work and yeah. do, like show up every day. 100%. And that'll, that'll prove your point, you know? Yeah. But as a youngster, yeah. you get excited, you start, you know, getting overzealous and get a bit of a head on yourself. And that was my first lesson in, in the industry, in networking, in business. Yeah. Um, just how to stay level-headed, man, and just how to be just a regular dude, you know? Yeah. You know, we're all just trying to make it out here, so. But then you, so then you, you knew that it wasn't for you, you, and then, you know, your dad turned you around, not turned you around, but he finally convinced you, right? And now you're working for your dad, right? You're now wrenching at the shop, doing wrestlers with them, learning as you go. What was that life looking like for you? Because... I had a very similar situation, yeah. Like, similar thing, left school early, but instead of going to club scene, I actually went straight into trade. Went to my dad's workshop, similar thing. What was that life like for you then? Because for me, reality came flying yeah, it quick. Hits, it hits you hard. Hits yeah. you hard, right? Yeah. Like, I'm 17 going, I'm working a full-time job. I don't see any friends anymore because they're all in school. Yeah, I'm, school out here, I'm, work, I'm out here wrenching, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Because I ain't trying to be in education. Yeah. Well, you know, like, what, what were you thinking? Like, is this my life? Is my yeah, life? Yeah, like, it, it was a reality check, yeah. man. Well, I was enjoying the music industry and the music thing, and it was all fun and games, and it was, it was awesome. Um, and then I actually, it's, it's funny, because I didn't make my own choice to go back into automotive. I still was interested in the music scene. I still wanted to chase that. Mm. And funnily enough, I met my now wife um, at the age of 23. Mm. So I think five or six years had passed in the music industry. And basically just wasting time, wasting time, going out every weekend, sleeping during the week, getting absolutely nothing done. Mm -hmm. um, spending all the money that, that I was making yep. uh, back in the club, yep. which was my dad's biggest pet peeve, to be honest with you. He hated mm. that. He used to say, like, where's your, like, where's your money? You know, yeah. like, dad's a businessman. He's yeah. a hustler. Like, it's all about dollars and cents. 100%. So if it's not making dollars and cents, then it, it doesn't make sense, you know? Was that the tipping point for why he didn't want you doing that? Yeah, absolutely. And he was, like, all well, in, like, that nah, intertwined with the fact that there was heavy drug use, <laughs> yeah. partying, sleeping through yeah. the week, getting getting absolutely nothing done, mm. not being really a member of society, to be honest. You're not, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, not being an active member of society. Yeah. Um, You're in your own bubble at this point. Yeah, yeah that's why I mean. In my own head, basically, in my own world. No, then I met my wife at the age of 23, and it was it was pretty easy for me to see, man. Yeah. If you want to stay on this this road and this path and just just keep being selfish, you can completely just self-destruct. Yeah, go down that 100%. Route, yeah? But that's because you have... But now that you've you, you got a part in a different situation, because you're now you're thinking about us and not me. Well, that's right. Yeah. Well, life doesn't give you that many opportunities, you no, know? You don't, yeah. And you'd be silly not to grab the opportunities that you're given. 100%. Um, and when I noticed that I had a good girl with a good heart, the only one of the best for me, you know, mm. a real G, you know, a real, yeah. real ride or die. Yeah. Once I realised that, the light just flicked in my head and I'm like, man, 100%. this is it, you know? Yeah. If I'm going to make it happen, I'm going to make it happen for her, you know? I don't want to lose, lose this one. thousand percent. Yeah. So she just gave me the confidence. She just kept telling me, you know... This is this life's not for you. There's yeah. more to life than this, you know. Yeah. Like, let's go on a holiday. Let's uh, yeah. let's do this. Let's plan to buy a house and mm. all that stuff wasn't even in my mind, man. Yeah, yeah. I just, just want to party. Play. I just want to party, yeah, bro. You know. Like party, bro. And then <laughs> it started to hit me that life. You know, life is not as long right. as we think it Dude, is. Dude, life hits you. Yeah, it yeah. hits, it hits, it hits you. You get that quarter jab, life you know? crisis yeah, vibe, right? right man. 25 hitting quarter 20, life I was at 23, like, <laughs> hit me, you know? And then all the stuff just man. starts coming back to you that your parents told you, you know? Like, yeah. this is going to catch up with you. Yeah. Life's not, you know, it's not a joke. But you know? not even your parents, too. We have social media, too, yeah? You got, yeah. like, things like 4 30 under 30. Yeah, yeah well, expectation, before, we're trying like, to make a billy by 30. Well, this is 2008, man. So there was none of that, really. No. I don't even think Instagram was a thing. Ah, you know what I mean? This is pre social media, which makes me sort of feel old, you know? But this is pre social media. So. But you would have had a blast then, actually, because it was great. But everything was word of mouth and everything was physical networking. You had to go out 
there. You had to go speak to people. You had to go to that club to get that gear. You had to meet mm. that promoter, you know? It was all really, you had to be yeah. out there putting yourself out As much there. as your dad hated you for that stuff, so I feel like you you learned, you learned needed those skills. I definitely did. I learned you, a lot of You probably didn't that. know that you needed it then and there because if you're just a wrenchman and you're getting yeah, paid by it. hour, you're, you're not talking yeah. to no one. And you're in that workshop all day, 40 yeah. hours a week, and then on the weekend, yeah. what? There's, a, re- there's a receptionist. Yeah, there's someone right. running admin, you know? That's, that's not your job. Yeah, well, going but, out on my own was massive uh, a massive learning lesson and, and just how to navigate people you know um meeting new people and just just uh giving people what they really what they want you know yeah that, that's where i started to learn that to get what you want you sort of have to uh put in the work you know 100%. and if you just want to stay and just take the easy route and party yeah. and you know go out and reckon drinking and just take advantage of relationships and friendships not really going to be a good life you know what i'm saying yeah. you want to be 40 and ringing your mates and say hey we're going out this weekend yeah. you know like you so, know, so now you had that in your mind right yeah. and you're working at that shop you got skills yeah now. so i go back to dad's yeah go back to dad's work for him for a few more years we built some cool cars man that's actually sick now that you mentioned that what were some of the six sickest cars that you actually built with your dad over those few years oh there were so many so many man so many got built yeah because um, you would have worked on them for months at a time you're you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're year, working years, on that car a few, few, few yeah. years yeah some some of the builds went on for you know a year two years um then dad started to get really n- well known for his Group C race car builds, the yeah. wide body RX-7s, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and for those who don't actually understand Group C in Australia, what are the rules? It's NA? Um, I'm not too sure about the specifics. But, oh, what about back then? Sorry, they uh, keep changing. They change year after yeah, year. Yeah, they change it, but I, I, I think um, the gist of it, well, dad, dad built a mock-up Alan Moffat race car, mm-hmm. which is a very well-known yep. uh, Peter Stuyvesen Correct. race car. If you, yep. if you know racing, you know the Peter yep. Stuyvesen RX-7, you know? It's um, crazy. Crazy, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's probably the more most- More nostalgic than crazy, actually. Dude, yeah. like, yeah, and more nostalgic to get to, than crazy. Yeah, yeah. He builds them, like, spot on. Yeah. Man. Like, you can't tell the But difference. do you feel like he did that? Because it's like, when he was growing up, yeah, right? Yeah, that was the cool car. That, 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 that was, was the shit, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. So yeah. he built a replica of that. And it's a funny story. He actually went to a- Alan was having an auction- um, getting rid of a lot of his memorabilia stuff. I remember that so actually. So dad got yeah. invited to that and he actually thought, you know what, I'm gonna take Why this. did they do that sale? They, that was I the only time they- Yeah, I think he was just clearing out. He, had he a offloaded lot of, a lot Yeah, lot a lot of memorabilia. Cars. Dad bought a lot of stuff off him. Yeah. Um, But the funny thing was dad thought, oh, I'm gonna take the car down there, you know? Yeah. So dad cruised the car down there. He was actually there, so he he pulled him outside and you know signing the dashboard for him and stuff. So that was just Dude. like sort of peak peak moment for him, you know. Yeah. Um, and to hear him say, "Man, you've done a great job on the car. Like that looks that looks killer, you know." Yeah. And then to sign off on it as well and put right. his icing on the cake, icing awesome. on the cake, you know. So that for me is probably the coolest thing to be a part of, you know. Um, seeing yeah, dad just just ha- just have a, a pure vision and then just making it happen. That was mm. basically my drive as well, man. I just realized that that was in me as well. I can do that as well. And then it got to a certain sort of point where dad, dad wanted me to go out, meet some more people, mm. network, try, try new skills. So I landed at uh, Faulkner Wheels and Tires mm. in uh, Faulkner. The lads down there, Omer and Abs, absolute gentlemen, mm. uh, took me under their wing straight away and showed me the whole, the whole trade, wheels and tires, fitment, suspension, yep. the whole show, man. These dudes would get it done, like, yeah. no matter what. 100%, like, bro. Yeah, like yeah. If they, it was the first time I had seen dudes, like, if they couldn't do it, they would learn how to do it. Yeah, if man. they didn't have it, they would make it happen. Yep, you know what I mean? Yep. Like it, it was just sort of like this hustle where there's no issues here, man. That's what you want. Mm-hmm. Let's get it done. Yep, you exactly. want to lift your you want to lift your Hilux? Drive it in. Yep. You want to lower your SS? Yeah. Drive it I in. I think that's you know? because there's a lot of shops that they don't want to take on those jobs for the yeah, responsibility. Nah, these dudes were like hustlers, man. Yeah. For the first time, I was like, damn, this is sick. Like 100%. these guys are on the move all day from eight in the morning yep. till five at night, Monday mm-hmm. to Saturday. They wouldn't stop. Right. Yeah, um, right. And I just fell in love with the, the industry on, on a sort of- Still to this day, by the way, they're still trading Saturdays too. Yeah, yeah Saturdays, absolutely. They, they're still open Saturdays and it's like yeah, full Saturday. house. Yeah, 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 Saturday like, it's not three. like, oh yeah, we're only going to have like half the stuff. Nah, dude, they got nah, full, full house. Full, full house, yeah. Full house, they're like, yeah. So, so you were at Faulkner and then you started your own shop. Well, I was at Faulkner for three, four years and I, I was- I was uh, working my way around the wheel and, wheel and tire industry. I was actually getting really um, interested in fitment and wheels and getting wheels in. And, yeah. And Omar, my boss, he was just a weapon, man. He would get whatever you wanted whenever you needed it, you know? Yeah. Um, he was the plug. Like, yeah. He could get you whatever tire you wanted, whatever yep. wheels you wanted, and he would just make it happen. Yeah. Um, so I worked there for a little bit and I started to notice that a lot of people coming in getting their wheels painted gloss black. Yeah. Black packs for these cars. Yeah. So new cars would come yep. and then, you know, would take the wheels off. We'd put Do it they all my chrome? You know? Yeah, yeah, we'd yeah, put exactly. a dark, not yeah. even chrome. It wasn't even blackouts at the time. It was just the wheels. They oh, would just come damn. to the tire shop and they would be like, can, we, can you paint my wheels black? Mm. And Omer's, um, 
<laughs> Omer's uncle or cousin, family member had a panel shop and we were sending five, six sets out a week, you know? Yeah. And it just hit me like a, a ton of bricks. I was like, man, this is what I should be doing. You know, yeah. there's a market for this. I'm a painter by trade and, and yeah. a panel beater by trade. So this is in my wheelhouse. I know how yeah, to that's your bread and butter, bro. Yeah, I know how to fit tires. I understand wheels. Um, there's definitely a market for this. I, I, I noticed that there was just this, this hole, you know, panel shops will spray full cars. They'll fix a dent. They'll do this. But I noticed that they didn't want to, they didn't want to do wheels, you know. They didn't want to rip the wheel off, put the car up, get the tires off, strip the weights, take all the dirt off the, the, the wheel, clean it, repair it, sandblast it if need be. I noticed there's a massive hole in the market. So I, I pretty much just put it out to the boys like, I think I'm going to go, you know. I think I'm going to, this is my idea. And their dad said to me, that's that's the best option for you, man. There's no real moving up here. My sons run the office. Yeah, it's a, fa they fa run the, practically it's a family, family business, business you know? right? Yeah. You, 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 but even you knew that too. Yeah, yeah. I knew you're, that from the start. You're not and like delusional, I'm, like, no, yeah, no. I'm just going to take over but the family business as some random outsider. Yeah, no, when I started there, yeah, no, I, there I, was, I wasn't looking up. I was yeah. just looking forward, you know. 100%. I was just trying to just get work and get the job done. Um, but, wait, but when did it hit you? Like, this is like, I guess it was like, how many, at what point was it like, Dude, this is like the tenth car that we just asked for black wheels. Yeah, well, that, that there, there was a defining moment. Definitely, a car came in one of the newer Mercs with the machined edge the, around the the wheel. Yeah, that yeah, one yeah. fine yeah, machine yeah, line, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and Tell I think me was, if you, not, none of the mobile guys wanted to do those. No, yeah. not even because well, they had the little came. airbrush thing and yeah, the little. It was just clipped shit. on the yeah. corner. It was just clipped yeah. on the corner. It had a slight bit of rash. Yeah. And Omer, my boss at the time, he goes, "Man, can you just get the files and just file the gutter rash out, mm. and then we'll give it back to the customer and whatever." So I just did a quick gutter rash repair. It wasn't even a, a thing we offered there, you know. He just, it must have been a friend or a family yeah, member or something. And he's yeah. like, can you just do it for you? Yeah, yeah just You've got that. a background in this stuff. Yeah. Can you fix this? Yeah. There's a little, so little, little Ricky side yeah, quest. Yeah, that's it. It's a little <laughs> side quest during the day. All the boys are fitting tires. So I get to do it like something yeah. different, you know. So I repaired it. And then Omer was like shocked, man. He's like, damn, you know, that looks that looks killer, bro. You can't even <coughs> notice that it was gutter rash. Yeah, I don't even know how to charge this guy now. Yeah, so and then service we charge the light bulb <laughs> just went off. And I was just like... Man, yeah, there's yeah. a market for this. You know, if I can repair gutter ash, paint the wheels black, I'll do blackouts, custom paint. Righty, righty, right. So I left Faulkner. The dad told me, he said, man, I think the best bet for you is to go out and go do your own thing. So I went back to dad, pitched the idea to him, and he was like, let's go. You know, let's go. We'll clear you a little space in the back. Mm -hmm. Get a logo, get a card, yeah. all the stuff you sort of do at the start. Think of a name. We landed on, well, I landed on Painted. I think it was yep. catchy, you know, yep. Painted. Yep. Um, sort of encompasses everything. I didn't want to sort of put myself in a box. Yo, surely there was other names. What was the other compared? Did you have Honestly, other names? there was no other names. No other names? It was just painted? Look, painted. Uh, there was a few other yeah. ones getting thrown around in the yeah. works, but as soon as I landed on- Surely there was something like cringiest. Oh, uh, uh, who knows? And it probably was, you know, yeah. it probably was. But the one that just stood, stood out for me was painted. Like you know, Ricky's, what about Ricky's auto refinishing. Yeah, we done like, 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 like those classic yeah, like, like, like auto house and all this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went over it. That would have sucked. Yeah, yeah, it would have Sucks so Ricky's bad, you know. Oh. But uh, you bro, know, if you that go, was your copy there, I would not take no my wheels to you, bro. No one would have taken it to me, you know. But then I thought, you know, painted it just hit me, and oh, we had it spelled out P A I N T E D, you know, on on paper. Yeah. And I was looking at it, and I'm just like, that just doesn't look. That just doesn't hit, you know. Like painted bro, with the E, it just doesn't yeah. hit. Jokes aside, bro, I actually thought you did painted with the D because you couldn't get the trademark. No, no, <laughs> I, no, that wasn't the case, I, man. That I that thought you were like, case. damn, someone got no, the E D. No, 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 no. I just looked at the word. If you just look at the word painted with the E in it just but didn't look right. It doesn't that's actually right. a fact factual point from a graphic designer point. Yeah, guess, um, when, when, visually yeah. how things yeah. look sometimes is, is is more important than yeah. how you might say it. Because when, when when I did your merch run, when I was having the logo put out and stuff with the E, it looks weird. Yeah, dude. yeah, it's whack, man. It's it doesn't whack, look right. Yeah. And the D just like sort of because the letter T and D because they're, yeah. they're like they both have the the long side. Yeah, and they're crisp, man. And make it nice, nice. and crisp. Yeah, Mickey. Yeah. D, so bro. as soon as we well, I was looking at it painted, and then I'm like, you know what? What if we drop that? Just something as simple as just drop the E. Yeah. You know? It's still the same word. But it's just dropped the air, you know? Yeah. And then once I looked at it, I was like, damn, that looks so good, you know? And yeah, like, this we, is me. I'm him now. That's him. That's it. It just yeah. sort of felt right, you yeah. know? Yeah. And then once I sent it off, it's funny. I was using my tattooer as my graphic designer at the time. Yo. So I'm like to my tattooer, bro, can you knock this logo yeah. up for me or whatever? And I was, I really love the American, like, baseball, basketball yeah. team logos. That they're design. Pretty, pretty timeless as well. Yeah, they're timeless yeah. and they're forever changing. Yeah. They're always changing. Most seasons, they'll change, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, logo design changes as the team grows. Yep. The, the the mascot changes. Yep. And we've changed our logo pretty much every year since we've started. Mm. Um, just keeping it fresh and keeping yep. it evolving. The, initially, I love the, like, the sort of baseball cursive, sort of yep. over-exaggerated sort of, 
looking uh, logo, which mm-hmm. we went with and, and worked well at the start. Yeah. And then I found Gavi Shade. Yeah. <laughs> then you, you met me, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. I changed your life. You just understood. Dude. You just understood the assignment yeah. from the jump. You know. Yeah. Um, I think the brand sort of like. It, it builds on its, it's sort of building it does, on itself, bro. you know, you create. I'll say the same thing to you though, because like you, at the time you were also growing too yeah. as a business as well. So the branding as well had to kind of come with it, come with it at the same, exactly. But it's, it, they all come together at the same time. hundred percent. hundred percent. The brand, the brand is definitely the key. People don't really care about the product, you know, mm. like you buy a t-shirt, like the first thing you check is the tag on the, back you know it doesn't yep. matter if the, the design yep. on the front you might love it or hate it but if it's not a design that you like yep. it's all about branding you want to represent 100%. that brand you want to be yep. a part of that brand and part of that story yep. and i think the brand is is most important yeah you know? and some people might not even like and some people might be oh i don't want to buy things for the brand some people actually just buy either for the lifestyle yeah that's right and if you you know and people specifically will buy for specific brands for the sake of if this brand only sells blanks let's let, let's say uh, a brand that's only just sells blanks they only sell high quality blanks you're still buying that brand because that brand is known for selling blank garments. Yeah. Or it resonates quality. with you in some yeah. way. So it's like, I like buying this brand because if I buy a hoodie from these guys, my expectation for it is, is that I'm going to be able to wear this thing for two years and it's not going to shrink on me. Yeah, that's right. You know and what you I mean? know that, yeah. Th- that, that's why I buy that brand, but that's my expectation of, of it. the brand, know? that's it. If I have an expectation for like a car, a cool car brand, I'd expect like some cool prints or whatever lifestyle or car genre that yeah, that Yeah, tells a story. Exactly. Yeah, bro. 100%. But going back now, because we're going off topic, sorry. Going back to Painted. Now that you and your, your, your dad loved the idea, you want to start, like, for most businesses, money doesn't grow on trees. So how did you how did you guys fund this? Like, were you were you lucky enough to just, you know, be able to fund it with you and your dad, or did you have to take a risk on with the banks? Well, no. Or was it like you were there before Knobbers no. and Ties and you was like, you, I saved up a bit of money? That was it. You yeah. It. Yeah. Well, once I knew that that was the route that I wanted to take. You were just going <laughs> to stay at Fork Knobbers and Ties? Yeah, I stayed, I stayed at Fork Knobbers and Ties for a, bit, a, a few more months. And it's funny you because- You a bit of coin, yeah. Yeah, a bit of coin, started manifesting, talking to people about the idea. Well, well now you had the idea, so now you know, yeah, I'm so, going to start saying for- Yeah, so the idea's been, yeah. the, the seed's been planted, right? So. And one of my, I think, the ace in the hole for me is just being able to network, man. Being mm. able to talk to anyone basically about anything when I meet them, mm. you know. Um, so I just started putting the feelers out, man. Mm. I'd see a buckled wheel or a, gr- a rash wheel and I'd be mm. like, man, like I could fix that for you, you know. And then word starts spreading. And then all of a sudden this machine rocks up at Faulkner Wheels and Tires on a, on, on a pallet mm. that Abdul had bought, Abs, the youngest yeah. son. Yeah. It was a wheel repair machine, a lathe, uh, a lathe and a press to fix buckles. Mm-hmm. And Abs goes to me, I'm going to start fixing wheels. I'm going to start doing buckle repairing, yeah. rash repairing stuff. And I was like, man, that's such a, that's a good idea, dude. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That, that's sort of on route oh, on where, I'm, yeah, yeah. where I'm going. That's a yeah. great idea. So he started using the machine and he's super busy. He's a salesman. Yeah. He runs around the floor. He runs the shop. He, he, he's he's doing wep- everything. He's dude. doing everything. He's a weapon, you know? Jack of all trades. That's right. And he's very, he's got a lot of ideas and how to push the, the business forward and, and, and how to branch out and, and do he's other things. He's doing a lot. Not, he's not just he doing that. He definitely does a lot. He always I, does a lot, you know? He, he even sponsored a drift a drifter too. Yeah. Full livery. Yeah, yeah, every, yeah. Everything. Like this yeah. guy. Yeah. Like he's, he's doing like. Yeah, they do a lot, man. They yeah. do a lot. And so he bought the machine in and he was messing around with it a bit and he was quite busy. And he realized that to learn this machine, to, to start doing this, you had to focus your 100% of your time yeah. on it. To learn the machine, the machine is a beast of machine. You can yeah. get like hurt by this machine. Yeah. You've got to take your time with okay, it. Engineer stuff. That's right. Yeah, training. So it's just was sitting there for Stop. a bit. Stuff. Taking getting stuff someone to, yeah, yeah exactly getting someone to use it run it but then it's it. also a busy ass shop too that's so right like so you gotta stop you need an area for it it's a lot right you are so losing revenue because you're sending staff off for training like that's it yeah. yeah so anyway i noticed the machine was just sitting there because it wasn't getting used too much so i said to abs i was pretty much ready to leave and i said hey man what do you want for them what do you want for the lathe like i'll i'll, I'll buy it off Take you it if off you want. yeah, yeah i'll buy it off you so anyway, I think it was like four and a half grand or something yeah. like that, five grand. I think Yeah, he worked you he worked you good, bro. He pretty much gave it to me what he paid for it. He yeah. honestly told me it came yeah. in, this is what I paid for it. It's brand new, blah blah yeah. blah. So pretty much, oh, you didn't the, have to wait for it. That's the I didn't thing. have to wait for it. It was right there in front you of me. Also you also know? remember, machinery is not. Like, oh yeah, just because I can afford it means I can get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of I actually know a lot of workshops that actually rent machines because they're waiting months on months. Yeah, exactly. You know, for them actually, yeah. So like, he had it then there. All was all, all you had to do was just get Learn it from. It. Faulkner to, to wherever I needed to be. Wherever yeah. you needed to go, yeah. Well, yeah, the next the, the, the next thing was, I, I so I bought the machine off him. Yep. Um, and then I had to put it somewhere. Yep. So dad was like, bring it back here. We cleared out one. So dad's got quite a big shop, probably. Yeah, because he's doing resto stuff. Yeah, so. five, 600 square shops. Yeah. So 
Heaps of space, yeah? The last square foot. So he dug out a little corner for me in the back corner, literally the size of one car space, literally one car park. Yeah. So I had the lathe, um, the lathe and a little workbench. Yeah. That's all I had. And then just yeah. wheels just laid out everywhere. Yeah. Everyone's starting to bring through wheels, you know? Yeah. Before I knew it, that spot was completely full. There was no room for me to, yeah. to work anymore. It was ideal because I had a spray booth. Dad had the spray booth yep. and stuff. So I had everything there ready mm. to go, you know, could you will repair paint. That, that probably helps you. That probably helped you way more. That than, helped. That was, that, yeah. Because I think for a lot of people, it's like. Yeah, that was key at the yeah. start, man. Having dad, dad's the goat, man. Yeah. Like, honestly, he helped yeah. me. He, he, he helped could me you, through a lot. Then, could you would have saved on a lot of overhead. Definitely, of definitely, definitely. Oh man. You need help. Even little you things. You just ask. You need to have the research, bro. Even that, even little things, man. Like the shop was fully fully decked out. So yeah. sandpaper, anything uh, you needed was yeah. there, body filler. It was all there, you know? So it was yeah. a blessing. It was yeah. definitely a blessing to be there. Yeah. Um, then we ran, we just simply ran out of space. So me and my girlfriend, my wife now, we moved out to a rental. Our first rental moved out of mum's mm-hmm. house. So I grabbed the lathe from dad's and threw it in the garage in the rental, in a two car garage. So now I had two car spaces. So I was on, you know, mm. and I could work th- around the clock. I, I left dad's and I just went to, to the garage and just started doing wheel repair all, all, all day. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we're just smashing out wheel repair in the garage, but I was at home, you know, yeah. I was at home. So it was sort of, we're hitting, we're hitting limits to what was capable and what people were willing to drop yeah. off to the garage, you know? But also too, you didn't want to take up too much risk as well. Yeah. Because it's one thing to spend your own money for business. If different, you take out a 200K bank loan, you get m- investors, Different story. You open up a real, you open up a shop. Yeah, straight deck away. out a shop yeah. straight away. Spend a million dollars. Exactly. And open it up. Same yeah. thing with me. I, I did the exact same thing. I, I actually went from like an apartment and I up and I upsized my house just so that I can yeah, work, so work for, just, well. like because I can know I know that I can afford my rent, be able to write some of this, uh, write some of the rental off um, through the yeah, space, through work. Yeah, yeah, through the work that I'm doing and this kind of stuff. But I needed to. I get. Was that your time for you to like really test out if this is actually gonna work out for me? That was it. Like man. it's like I ain't gonna drop no. 25 30 50k a year on a on a lease yeah over, overhead not, ongoing taxes not gonna work. all these machinery signed 12 five year 12 to five year lease and i flop and oh. now you're and now you're that dude on real commercial trying to sublet your place yeah, your place <laughs> look i don't flopping on market flopping never sublet. flopping never ever crossed my mind yeah man. flopping never ever crossed my mind i i, I, I knew from, i knew from the jump that if i if i if i'm going to do this i'm going to do this i'm going to make it work no matter what 100%. so we started with wheel repair like literally gutter rash repair man mm. 100 dollars jobs 80 50 dollars jobs sometimes man you know Bro, that, that, that's below market price dude i was doing like, things basically for free dude, just to mobile, do, do dude, the job you know i know you yeah, know the bros come through mates rates yeah well literally man what are the prices for wheel repairs like uh, back home in New Zealand, dude. There's like, like in Auckland. Yeah. There's only like a couple places that do it. This is yeah. There's this real famous one called Arrow Wheels. Yeah, um, yeah. I yeah, took my my full set of LMGTs there, okay. and I was like, "Hey, man, I just you know get the faces redone and the barrels, maybe." And dude, he quoted me like bring out twelve hundred bucks a wheel. Yeah. I'm gonna also say like, though, because they're also the shop in Auckland, dude. You got LMGT twos, bro. You're gonna pay yeah, the, you're gonna you, the you, money. you you are paying LMGT taxes. LMG. Yeah, <laughs> legit. Yeah, bro, bro. They, they see a brown boy yeah, walk in with LMs. They're, they're gonna right? be like, "This guy is cashed yeah, up, yeah. bro." Well, <laughs> for, for me, it's it's always been. I haven't really looked at things like that in in that sense. Like you, know? you never thought of like, oh, everyone else is charging this, so I should be charging. No, no, nah, nah, because I sort of because over here it's hundred dollars for mobile guys, and they come to you, dude. I was flat Two. broke. I had no money. Like right. I was like bum mode, bro. Like yeah. on drugs, no money. Yeah. I underst- un- understood how hard it is to earn money and how like yeah. when you want to spend it, it like it's hard to peel it away from people you know i don't like overcharging people yeah i don't like you know people feeling sore when they when they leave yeah. so i'm sort of always have been the cheapest yeah. cheapest dude 100%. you know i just get the job but, done but it's also tough because it's also like you too need to get paid at 100%. The end of the day. you know you got bills to pay 100%. as well. well in the garage it was okay no overheads you know yeah exactly. so it was cool you know eighty yeah. dollars. It was, it, it was all profit you know it was yeah. all profit um but then, yeah, one day uh, I was looking in the garage, man, and we couldn't get even our cars into park up, you know, because mm-hmm. there was so many wheels just lined up, sets and sets and sets lined up. Mm. And my wife came out to the garage and she just looked around and she looked at me straight in the face and she's like, this is this is going to be it for the rest of our lives. Like, yeah. is this how you're going to operate? Yeah. She's like, you need to get a shop. We need to start the business. Yep. This need, we, need to go fu- we need to go full steam ahead. You know? 100% because, like, I mean, what was happening around you, around your inner circle? What was your best friends doing at the time? Like, are they all going to like their professional careers now? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. A lot of the boys are still doing music, still yep. DJing. Um, so that's really not in my. Yeah. M- my you weren't mind. like, oh fuck, I feel like I gotta play catch up and. Sh-. Nah, yeah. no, nah, not at all. I was yeah. sort of going back 
um, going back to myself and really, really working on myself in this time. For those who don't know, you also grew up, you know, grew up in a not so very good environment. So yeah. the, the upbringing, the, the, the norms of our upbringing is, is you don't make more than 55K a year. Yeah, that's you right. You don't leave these areas. Well, you work a normal trade job. You do a shitty 5 a.m. to 3 a.m. That's right. And you pick up your kids. Yeah, You're, that's it. We're, we're painters, we're concrete workers, we're lollipop men. We, we, do, we do all the trades. And that's it, bro. We, oh, we, I we kn- that. No, I, none of our friends have ever gone into education. I bet you don't even have a friend that even went into education. Education in what way? As an after school. Oh, it's like uni or something? Yeah. No, 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 no. You see what I'm saying? No, exactly. no, no. Because no, we didn't, we, that, that's because that wasn't in- No, the, not even- th- That th- wasn't even in the ballpark No, not for at all. Life that for just us. was just always hustling, man. Just yeah. trying to like- It's always just trying to make ends start meet, Start a business, bro. always yeah. doing it on his own, Just man. making ends meet, bro. And then he yeah. landed on his, his current business, which yep. he's, he's just um, retiring now. So yeah, when he landed on that, that's sort of all I knew. That was the, that was the blueprint that I knew. Mm. Get a skill, get your skill set, dial it in, become the, become really good yep. at it, and people will just come. And yeah. I watched that happen for my dad. Took it from exactly the same blueprint. Like he was in the garage. Yep. I used to walk home from school, and I'd yeah. be able to smell paint as yeah. I'm walking home yep. from school. You know, yeah. and I'd see like paint bellowing out of our garage yeah. to the point where the EPA came to our house yeah, and yeah, knocked yeah. on the door and said, yeah. "Hey, we're gonna shut." shut you down, what are yeah. you doing? Like you're painting cars and there's a school like a corner right away, yeah. you know? So dad had to get a workshop out of necessity. Yeah, exactly. same, 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 same as me, you know? Yeah. Um, I wasn't gonna go back and work for someone after spending a year and a half working on dialing in no way, painted bro. and the wheel no way, repair. Bro. I wasn't ever gonna go back. Nah. So flopping, going back to what you were saying, yeah. flopping was never an option. Yeah. This is out of necessity. This yeah. is not cause I wanna be cool. Yeah. This yeah. is not cause I wanna I own a business. Succeed. Yeah, this is not cause I wanna be yeah. known on social media. This is cause I need money to pay yeah. my bills, man. Yeah, and this like, is all I know how to do. Do. And if you don't do this, what am I doing? We're gone, man. I'm tired for the rest of my fucking life. That's right, yeah. 5k a year, like, and there's being, nothing wrong with that, but it's just- That was never gonna work for you me. You can't live on that, bro. You no. got a partner? You could well, you could live on that. Um, You could live on that, but- um, Sorry, you, you, sorry. Uh, yeah, let's let's go back to that. Yeah. I, Because this is a podcast, you definitely can live, live on, on that. that, Yeah, but that's not the life you wanted for yourself. Nah, no, not, not yeah. at all. Not, not, yeah. not coming from where I came, not, yeah. not seeing yeah. what was possible, Um, yeah. seeing, Seeing my old man have a collection of cars that runs, I'm talking yeah. 40, 50, 60 cars deep at any, t- any yeah. one time. Containers here, yeah. containers there, mm. cars like, yeah. you know, hidden away here and there. And you just think this is all just came from showing up every day. Yep. You know, you just got to show up every day. There's, there's been people that started at the same time as me, dudes around the same age as me that started similar businesses when I started. And they just didn't show up every day. Mm-hmm. They just they just weren't consistent and they didn't keep going, you know? Mm-hmm. I just haven't stopped. I just go every single day yeah. and people just know that you're that dude that's there every but single day. When, when, but at what point did you get that mentality of like, I just need to go in every day? Because I get it. Because the, the surrounding is, is you got your dad and all that kind of stuff, but then you also got your peers and the community around. You see the community, you know, pretty bad on substance abuse. There's that side of things. There's also you, you, you. There's also you trying to. There's also you being young and going like, I also want to kick it with my friends and go clubbing still. Like, at what point were you like, I just need to hustle it out for a couple of years? And then, uh, it was. It was when I went. It was when I met. When I met my wife. When I met yeah. Hannah. I just. She. She just said to me at the start, like, do you, do you, do you want to just be a bum? for the rest of your life? Or do you want to be someone? Do you yeah. want to make some money? Like yeah. be like, you know, live out your dreams. There's yeah. so much more to life than drugs, yeah. partying, sex and rock and roll. Did you have to like, what, was there any like major things that you had to do to like get out of the city? Like was there friendships that you had to ruin? Definitely man, yeah. there were so, many, like there that, so yeah. many friends that I lost, yeah. which in a sense they weren't really friends. They're not. Yeah, yeah. But the you're, friends- you're just, you're, 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 We're just acquaintances because yeah, we're, we're both- you're enjoying we're, the same thing. We're, we're both enjoying the same thing right That's now. Right. Yeah. You're both enjoying self-destruction. Yes, so, correct. Um, you sort of find company in that. Yeah, now and, I have, and to, to make you feel better. That's right. Exactly. And now my best my, my best mates, we've been, like I met them mm-hmm. DJing, clubbing yep. and all that. And the few that survived, they're still around, you know? But, they, but that's because they too will turn their lives around. They're G's, yeah. man. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're solid dudes mm-hmm. as well. Um, but yeah, I needed to do it for me, man. I knew that there was more to life. I knew there was more to me. Mm. Um, I knew there was layers to me that I hadn't unpacked it because I was yeah. so lost in the world of drugs and yeah. alcohol and yeah. partying. And once you come into the real world, you realize that, man, there's some dudes out there doing some heavy stuff. You that, know? W- that was my turning point too, I think. Um, I was saying to my mate over here, because for those who don't know us, uh, we, we were actually friends from New Zealand before I came to Australia. Right. I actually left New Zealand because I was in a similar situation as you. I was doing absolutely nothing with my life. Every single day was just the same thing. We're in a field, 
doing absolute nothing, just being bummed. Wasting time. Just yeah. wasting time, yeah. being bummed, right. doing bum lost, things. Lost, man. Yeah, doing bum things as a group activity because we're all bums. And then for me, it was like I had to up and leave, leave the country yeah. and just be by myself, introverted, two years. That's what I did. And yeah. just like know who I am and then... You have to look inward, man. Yeah, you, you have, have to. Look inward and, 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 and it's, everyone has their own things. And, and for me, it was just like, I think I just had to restart life. Yeah, I think it, it was definitely I, a reset for me too. Yeah. It was a reset when I realized that, well, there's... Drugs and addiction has run rampant through my family. My a few of my uncles have passed away from drug addiction. And the Ga- suburbs that we live in. That's right. Well, yeah. yeah. So drug addiction, gambling addiction, it's all... It's not like... It, all, it was all... It's, it's a normal thing. Yeah, it was on the table yeah, for me growing yeah, up. It annoying. wasn't ever taboo. Yeah. It was like I had yeah. uncles pass away early on. Yeah. Um, uncles still to this day, mm-hmm. you know. It, it's, it's, it was in the family and I went down that route so naturally, yeah. you know, it was so natural that it didn't even yeah. feel wrong. But and then once yeah. you wake up, you wake up six years later, you come out of the haze of drug use and stuff and you meet someone who's trying to put you on the right track mm. and you just realise that any longer like this, I'm going to die. You know what I mean? Or you're going to be like... That's too, the turning point actually for me. Or the addiction me. just takes over. That's, well, it did yeah. take over. It was, it, it, yeah, I, I was yeah, gone for six yeah, years, yeah. man. You know, like I, was, yeah. I, I wasn't I was I wasn't Ricky, you know. Yeah. I wasn't doing what I was... I wasn't yeah. on the path I was meant to be on. Yeah. Well, look, I learned a lot of lessons yeah. in that in those dark places, mm. in those depressed places, yeah. in those I don't want to do this no more places. 100%. They made me realise that we can only go up from here. Exactly. This is like, we're like, at the bottom now, yeah. you know? And how, if, how much worse can it be? Exactly. Well, it can't get any worse. Yeah. You know what I mean? We can only go up, you know? Yeah. And it, once you've gone through addiction and you've lost family members, you've lost friendships, you're sort of on the rebuild. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're and rebuilding any, any, yeah, relationships. And any, and all these little things, all these little progression things. Yeah. They snowball and shit. Definitely. Right? Yeah. And you're starting to, you're, you're trying to gain back trust. You're trying to gain back love. You're trying to build back relationships that you've, You've, you've tarnished, you know, by mm. being selfish for all those years. Where now I'm at a place where, oh man, I'm so in love with my family, so in love with my kid, so in love with my wife, my mom, you know, our family's so tight. Yeah. I'm back, yeah. you know, we're yeah. back as a family. Yeah. It just makes everything so much yeah. better, you know? Yeah. And I'm on a mission. Exactly. I'm on a mission to, sh- to pretty much prove everyone that I'm not the person that I was, you know? I'm 100%. not the person that you knew. I was only a phase, you know? Yeah. And you can be more than people expect of you as well. Yeah. You know, people might just put you in this basket. Oh, he's a deadbeat. He's a loser. He's yeah. not going to be... I used to but get told people, I was going to be nothing. But some always you know? put you in that box yeah. permanently, even when you do succeed. Yeah, well, that's hate, right. They're just going to hate on you for but that. But then bro. I keep that as drive. I keep, I keep that, as, bro, I keep I that need, as fuel, you know? I need that every yeah, day, yeah. That's. Oh, I have so much self-doubt and... Um, insecurities that mm. I, I that's my fuel you know yeah. i can't i've got to be better every single day i've yeah. got to show up yeah. i want to be in those conversations <laughs> yeah. you know i want to be you know on, on the pulse of of something important you know yeah. i want to be building on something i'm not just want to spend my days going clocking in clocking out yeah. clocking in clocking out yeah you know i want just, my just part of the system yeah bro, part of like, the system no yeah. i want my daughter to 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 have a as I had a blueprint yeah. on how to hustle, whether that's using your hands, whether that's starting your own business, yep. whether that's getting into social media. Yeah. Um, and even for you, like you have a goal of like just trying to move out to the um to King. Uh, to yeah, all, to down the, to the get out to the, the bush, down, down to the bush to the lake, and like definitely. And man. and if and that would change everything for even for your daughter upbringing. She won't have to see anything yeah. that you saw. Exactly. Her life would be different to yours. Yeah. Hopefully, I can the, insulate her a yeah. little bit from what I, I dealt with. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not saying that you're you're, you're trying to control. Like, it's just like no, nah. they're just. Bad distractions that aren't relevant. Yeah, not, not needed, they're, they're, they're not, not necessary. Needed. Yeah, you could gloss over it and still have a good life. You know, exactly. Which is what I want to sort of get, living in the sort of not inner city. It wasn't inner city. We're from like from Essendon, East. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was sort of on the edge of this edge yeah. of the city. Is all happening. You know, yeah. um, where I just want to get now that I'm getting a little bit old, I want to get back to more of a, a natural lifestyle, mm-hmm. a bit more nature mm-hmm. outside, less screen time. Um, it's weird. That's the stuff I care about now. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so it's weird though, but. Hey man, it's full circle. It's man. full circle yeah, it's because full circle, like yeah. you would never have thought that like a nah. couple of years ago that that's nah, what you even wanted. even eight years ago you when probably I'm... wanted to be like in like some apartment penthouse or something. Like, Literally, yeah, that's yeah, what I thought yeah. was going to be life, yeah. you know. And now that I'm um, now that I've got a kid and I'm we, we're married and um, things are just rolling, it feels this feels like the space you should be in. This 100%. this feels like a space that you can thrive, then someone can thrive in, you know. Yeah, but really, you just have to look. I had to look inward. I was really always looking looking for for or a buzz here and mm-hmm. there and always looking outward to, to, to feel good. Once I started looking inward and realizing that 
you know, nobody's going to do it for you nah, bro. unless you go and do it, you yeah. know? And everyone else around me was was dubious. Everyone else, I noticed everyone was scared to start a business when you talk about a business or they were a bit worried or they didn't have that self-belief, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I always had that self-belief. Yeah. I just never had any self-doubt. Like, yeah. if Joe Blow down the road can do it, yeah. what's different about him though. than me, yeah, you know? Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, what's different like, about him dude, than me? Dude, there are random dudes clocking like 15 cra- like crazy, crazy numbers, money. bro. Crazy yeah. numbers, yeah. Like, there has to be a reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there is no reason. There is the, re- yeah. the reason. The re- it's a simple reason. He got up and he went every single day, exactly. and he did not stop. Yeah. The guy, the guy that was trying, trying it out as well. While he was doing it, he maybe gave up just yeah. before. You know, yeah. where if you just don't stop and stay consistent, you can't be beaten because people these days will break at the slightest inconvenience. Yeah. You know, yeah. like when we got our first shop. I had been skateboarding the, the the Sunday afternoon before going to look at a fresh lease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I actually sprained my ankle so badly on the Sunday, like blew this thing out, like completely oh. blew it out. And I was telling myself, oh, man, you can't go look at this factory tomorrow. Like your ankle, you've just been at the doctor's all strapped yeah, up. Yeah. You're on crutches. Yeah. You should just scrap this, you know. Like, don't worry about it. Go next week or yeah. don't even go at all, you know. Just sit tight yeah. for six weeks, get better and get a job, you know, because yeah. you've done your ankle. It would have been so easy to, yeah. to do that. I was like, hell nah, I'm going, you know? Yeah. And I was on- Well, if you don't, who else? Who else is going to go? Who I'm else, not going to be able to get a factory, you know? Yeah. And I need to earn money. Yeah. You know, all the machines and stuff, they're in the garage. They need to go somewhere. Yeah. So I'm in Deer Park, like hobbling around, ch- looking at factories with the landlord, you know? Yeah. Um, and he's like, are you sure? Do you want to go to Killer Park and have a look at another one? And I was like, oh, my ankle was pretty sore. And he's like, you'll like this one, man. Trust me, let's go look <laughs> at this one. So I was like, all right, let's go. Like, <laughs> let's poor, go. This poor ages. Yeah, he's, he's wheeling this crew wheeling me around. Yeah, yeah. Right. honestly, I, th- I was thinking, I think he was thinking, bro, how's this guy gonna make money? Like, you know, well, he's wrecked. You look at him, you know. Um, so nah, yeah. bro, but because you gotta make ends meet, bro. I'm That's why right. survival, like, man. Literally, bro, I, was, I had no choice. So anyway, we get to Killer Park and yeah. I hobble over there, <laughs> and I've still got six weeks in the in the like strapped yeah, yeah, up and everything in recovery. You know? Yeah, so recommend think, a recovery. Yeah, so I'm thinking, shit, I'm gonna open this sh- shop, sign the lease, and I'm. Like a gimp, basically, you know, <laughs> I'm completely gone. Um, That's so, crazy, so, man. So, yeah. So, anyway, we signed the lease at Killer Park. Four years, like $80,000 over four years or something like that, which is, this is when the penny's dropping. This is getting heavy, you know. Mm-hmm. We're, 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 we're completely committed now. Yeah. So, I signed the lease, four years. Um, and, now, and now it's like, you're in the hole. We're in. You're we're in, in the hole. This is it, yeah, yeah. You're in the hole now. Four, four year lease. So, yeah. I signed, signed my life away for at least four years, which I didn't understand the, the scope of it at the dude, time. Dude, it's scary yeah. stuff, dude. If I turn back now, I would have signed two years with the option it, to continue on. Yeah, um, you should have, yeah. Four years but off the bat was like crazy. Because, dude, so much happens in four years. That's right. So and I didn't happens. expect to grow as much as we have in four years. I went yeah. from a single car space to... 98 square meters to now, which felt like, to now taking your neighbor's dude, parking. It felt like the exhibition building when yeah. I first opened that roller yeah. door. I was like, wow, man, like, I'm never going to fill this. This is yeah. great. I, like, I remember. We'll be able that. to work out of this forever. I remember when I first came to your show, it was empty. It was nothing, man. There's nothing I there. I just had the lathe, balance, tire balancer, yeah. and a wheel, uh, a fitting machine, and yeah. that's it. The booth wasn't even there yet. The booth was, wasn't there yet, yeah. and then we bought a you, small little yeah. tiny booth mm-hmm. just to fit wheels in. So yeah, I signed the four year four year lease, and then we realized that this is it. Like I've got to yeah. make it work, no, no matter what. Hundred percent. So anyway, we start organize a grand opening and stuff like that. We get everyone down there for the grand opening on on a Sunday. We I was absolutely like mind blown at how many people showed up. Like mm. we couldn't. Eat, me and my wife were literally saying to each other off to the side, like, "What the hell, dude? Like this yeah. is crazy. Like we've got like so many cars, here, so many people. The bookings were full for the next yeah. three four months. Everyone was like." Book, taking bookings all day, yeah. barbecue. Um, we we donated a bunch of uh, money to the the bushfires. Yeah. We had DJ. It was it was awesome, man. It was it blew me away. Um, that that the, um, is there a video of the grand opening? I yeah, mean, there's, there's like a couple videos. Yeah, the there's a couple of videos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dudes were bringing drones out and like crazy. it was crazy, bro. Yeah, and this was all word of mouth, just like yeah. a little bit of social media and a little bit of word of mouth. Like mm. it just went bang, it exploded. Yep. So anyway, we we're booked out for a couple of months there. And then um, I'm sitting at home after dinner just watching the news. And this is three weeks into having the lease. So we've we've had our grand opening. We're just getting set up. We're just getting the ball rolling. Bookings are uh, filling up. And boom, COVID gets announced. So they tell me that I I can't operate. And I've just just signed 80 grand away, four years of my life. And they're like, you can't go to work, you know? Um, And the landlord's still sending me invoices for rent. And I'm like, what the... Is going on, you know, yeah. like, what are we going to do? So a couple of days, I think it was like real frantic at the start. Like no one knew what to do really, yeah. you know, everyone was sort of feeling it out. What, what, what's the next move? Yeah. Um, so we'll still go, I was still going into work, but I noticed that no one around me had was working. 
no other shops were operating, you know? So there was no industry trickle of work. The shops around me weren't ringing me saying, Ricky, we need this, Ricky, nope. we need that, Ricky, we need that. So I was pretty much thinking to myself- Freak, You're freaking out, I'm bro. I'm freaking out, dude. <laughs> and I'm telling myself, thinking to myself, what, what the what's going on, man? Like, I'm just trying to make a life for myself. Like, Why I'm won't- I'm trying to make ends meet. Yeah, the universe Signing just does business. not want me to be just successful, you know? Yeah, he just gets a like, closed fist punch in the bro, face, bro. bro. literally, literally. It was like a backhand, man. I just <laughs> didn't even know where it came from. I just got slapped, like. And Shout out Dan Andrews. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. But then that's just another, It's just. it was just another uphill battle from there. For the yeah. next, as everyone knows, I'm not going to sit here and complain like it was a bad thing. Everyone's business went through the same 100%. thing, you know? Um, um, actually, no, some businesses actually benefited. Yes. It, I'm not going to lie. I was one of those who benefited. Benefit, like, yeah. yeah. A lot of I, online a lot of online businesses yeah. it helped and it, it yeah. sort of, you know. Um, but the, the, the automotive industry took a massive 100% because it's trade. Right? Yeah, yeah. The actual, like. Literally physical trade, you have to be yeah. there. And then you're saying we can't leave the house. Exactly right. We can't leave the house as well. Yeah. One kilometre range, five, yeah, then a five kilometre range. Exactly. Like, that was it? super hard as well. Right. That was so hard as well. And the rent just kept on coming. So, because we didn't know anything yet. So, yeah. rent, rent kept on coming. So we sat tight for a couple of months. We just dealt with it. And then we realized that this isn't going to change. No, you this can't is, you charge us to keep burning a hole. Yeah. You can't just keep taking on I more was debt. Going through, we were going through our savings like it was literally going out of fashion, man. We're, I was just paying bills, paying bills, paying bills. But so nothing coming in. Nothing coming in Dude, at all. I hate that feeling, bro. So we virtually got to the point of being broke. Yeah. Again, you know, we ha- we're down to probably one mortgage payment left, you know? Yeah. And like, what, 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 do we do? what do we do? My wife's, the shopping center's not open. She's not managing the store she's working at. She's not working Yeah. Yet. So now there's no income. Now there's no income. No household income. No nothing, yeah. Yeah. And then I get a random call. This is always how my life works. It's just like so. (laughs) Sorry, my life. Yeah, it's just like the universe just always just throws me whatever I need when I really need it, you know? Yeah. And my accountant calls me and he's like, Ricky, I've just gotten an email from the government. I can get you 20 20 grand in um, like money just to help cover your rent and keep you afloat. And I was just, man, I dropped to my knees when he told me that, you know? Bro, I we wish were, I got that phone call, We man. were about to lose our business. Yeah. We were about to lose our lease, yeah. which I was still 80 grand in for. I had signed away yeah. 80 grand. So I had to, I owed them that money no matter what. Yeah. Um, pretty much on the on the verge of broke, man. Yeah. Lose, gonna, gonna lose the house, yeah. everything, you know? But I, I felt like the, even, even though the, I feel like the government too didn't even do enough. They didn't do enough. Look, because even for me as a small business as well, I I didn't even I didn't get that funding. Yeah, I know a yeah. lot of people yeah. didn't, man. I, I know some people who did, some people who didn't. didn't but yeah. then I know guys that aren't small businesses and they're clocking not twenty k. Oh wait, a lot they're more. They're clocking yeah. like 200, 200 mil. Yeah, it wasn't like, ideal. It's like, what the? It wasn't ideal. It like, wasn't ideal nah, for everyone. Nah, it 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 helped us keep the roller door open. Yeah, for those for those dire six months yeah. to eight months where it was locked down, can't drive, can't go anywhere, um, couldn't go to work. So. It kept us afloat yeah. through that So now you can, pay, you, you can pay your leasing, pay your mortgage. Keep in mind, by the time we got the money, we we're already seven or eight grand in the hole anyway, you know? Dude. So your heart, like majority of it, it yeah. goes straight away. Most of it was just like a repay back to yourself. That's right, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. get yourself back to zero. Not even, I, yeah, I just paid all my bills, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, Damn, dude. And then I just came to the conclusion that this is going to keep going on for another year or two. Yeah. There's no there's no end in, in, in no. sight. So I just went, you know what, stuff this. I'm not going to lose my house. I'm not going to lose my livelihood. I'm nah. going to work. Yeah. If the army wants to stop me on the way, yep. if Dan himself wants to come try and stop me on the way, yep. he can. But exactly. he's not going to. You know no. what I mean? Um, I need to feed my family. Dude. So we just went. 100%. I just went every day. Yeah. Just every day and just going around to other people's shops when they were starting to open and yeah. just, just ask them, hey, man, have you got a wheel to paint? Have you got yeah. a bumper bar to paint? Yeah. Have you got something to paint? Start taking on private jobs and stuff too. Yeah, it was and literally, yeah. To be honest, do you, I feel like there was a time during that COVID where actually a lot of us car guys were, were, had a light bulb moment of actually, because it is COVID, let's hit up workshops and see which one of these guys are willing to build our cars because- In the downtime. Yeah, downtime because I'm at home every day. I don't need to drive the to car, from yeah. work. I can build it. We got a bit of that. You know we got I mean? a bit of that. But also what happened was People would. It's also, it also depends on the person too. Yeah, and people were dubious to spend their money because it was yeah. like this end of the world sort of vibe, you know. Like, t- if do you want to spend any of your savings because yeah. you know stuff might not be coming back online. Yep. Who knows when the next paycheck is? Yep. You don't know, you know. And people were spending that government money, bro. But then on the flip side of that, people were getting seven fifty, seven fifty, seven fifty from Dan, and yeah. they were spraying their wheels, spraying bro. their calipers, you know, everything, bro, going crazy. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there's really two sides, yeah. two, two sides of it, you know. I mean, let's go Yo. about one side of it, you know. Yeah, man. So you've uh, you know you moved out of the garage. You got your own shop now. Ch- COVID was a challenge of its own, but out of COVID, what other challenges as a small business did you face, man? After COVID, the challenges 
well, they've eased off because the world's moving again. It doesn't really feel like much of a challenge now. It feels like we're sort of just finding our feet again, mm. you know, because we were just just hustling, trying to stay stay open for so long for the past two years. We were just doing jobs that made us money, quick and easy ones, mm. in and out stuff. We the challenge now is getting back to where we were when we first when we first launched. You know that 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 excitement, that feeling, getting that 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 presence back online and, and just bringing, bringing things back to life. That's the main challenge, you know, mm. getting people interested again because it went everything went so flat for so long. So that's basically the challenge now. And the challenge now is just staying focused, mm. getting the job done, yeah. getting the job done right every single time and mm. just keeping on pushing forward. That's the challenge really now, oh, just keeping yeah. on pushing forward. So there must have been like, you know, Post COVID, there must have been like I think I seen an R thirty four on your Insta page. Yeah, yeah. Mitch's 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 R thirty four kicked everything off. Uh, oh. Mitch Ferguson is an absolute legend. What was the job you did for him? Um, initially, it was just these wheels. It was just building a set of wheels, a set of SSRs, which are absolutely stunning. Three piece, man. three piece SSR. Um, we went with the custom metallic uh, silver sparkle Big silver. Big spender. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, Mitch Mitch set the tone for this color. I, I sprayed his wheels. He was adamant on a real sparkly silver. That's mm. something that just went ballistic, you know. Um, so we hit it with the sparkle silver. And as um, soon as I put it online, as soon as he put it up online, it just went absolutely nuts. nuts like everyone's yeah. messaging me about yeah. this silver. Bro, please paint my – what's the color code? What's this? What's that? Yeah. Oh, man, you got to bring process? it. Yeah, yeah, what's the process? I'm like, just bring him in, yeah. leave him with me, and yeah. we'll get him sorted. So the sparkle silver just went nuts. And that was sort of like – Your a, thing? I put us on the map sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, this sparkle silver just hit so hard on Mitch's wheels. Mm. It just looks so good. And then status – Status seasonal was coming up. I think yep. the first, the first ever one, yep. which was everyone was super hyped about. And Mitch had picked up a fiberglass front bar and rear bar for his car. Yeah, and he was super adamant that it makes it to status with this body kit on yeah. it. Yeah, you know? and I was pretty set on just just building wheels. I only wanted to build wheels. I wanted to keep it small, just restore wheels, build wheels, three piece wheels, polish, polish, yep. you know, etc. That's because you had the lathe and everything. Had everything. Had all the machinery. Yeah. It was super easy. It was super like uh, it was a small compact setup. Right, you could yeah. do it in the small shop. It was, it was an easy one. But coming from my background in paint and panel, I, I wasn't going to say no to no, Mitch, you yeah. know. He's like, I really want you to fit it. So anyway, we fit this. I fit this bar up and uh, get it looking pretty pretty, pretty snug. Yeah. Chuck it in the booth. Mind you, I'm shitting myself because this car's going to status. Yeah. I haven't painted a bumper bar or a rear bar in yeah. a couple of years. I've only been working on wheels, you know. Yeah. Um, but Mitch believed in me. Mitch, yeah. Mitch wanted me to do it, you know. Yeah. He wanted uh, me to do it. So <laughs> I ended up getting it done. And I think we cut it super close. Like he was like... He came down to Melbourne. He lives in, in the southeast. Mm. And I think he came down like the morning of or something like that, you know. And we Dude. washed the car at my shop. Like oh we, we cleaned God. and wiped it all that and all that, you know. And it was pretty much ready to, to go to the show from there. We cut it that, that close, you know. Dude. And yeah. I was hooked. From then yeah. I was hooked. I was like, damn, building cars with a deadline. Like yeah. such a sick feeling, you know. It's actually a crazy even Even from the – even from my – before I met you, um, I had DT panel paint my whole car. For status, the same event actually. I have, I have our, our photos which I'll send to Eva, which I'll show and, and like a videos and stuff. Dude, I was supposed to be at the show because the show starts at 11 and they need the cars at 7 a.m. so they can do yeah, the like, bump in, yeah. bump in, stack the cars the way that they want. Dude, I was, supposed to, I was supposed to be at 7. Dude, it was 10 o'clock. We were on the cutters, bro. We we're on the dual. At one painter on the dual action, three inch. I'm on yeah. the five inch. We're just <laughs> buzzing down, yeah. Buzzing it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Cutting my car, bro. Still doing the wet, wet and dry sandpaper, bro. The like, pressure's on as well. Dude, and, yeah. we're, and then we pull up to the event. Heaps of like public cars were there. And I just cut through all of them. And everyone's just like honk at me like, what are you doing? Like cutting the line. And I'm like, yo, respectfully, I'm so sorry, but I actually got a boost. So that yeah, seems yeah, like yeah. a you problem. You guys all came too early. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because like, you know, like a lot of the guys that didn't make it to the event. Yeah, they come and park up. They come and park up at yeah. the, the regular parking yeah, spot. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm just- I gotta get through, bro. People were thinking <laughs> that I was just cutting the queue, nah. bro. And I'm like, bro, chill out, guys. Sure, You're yeah. here with your stock rep wheels, bro. It's all good, G. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's all I Let me do my thing, bro. I've been yeah. polishing all night. Go to your NPC parking yeah. spot, bro. They're like, they actually were like fuming at me, bro. So. I think after that event, it was just like, damn, dude. Like people, people take these events like serious, so yeah, yeah, yeah. serious. It's insane, dude. Well, when you when you're working on people's cars for them as well, like you think how people how serious people are when yeah. they're just attending. Yeah, you know. So when you're working on people's cars for it, the pressure yeah. is like you, you can't be like, oh, you, you won't see that from three foot away when he's nah, driving. No, nah, not dude, at all. This yeah. car is getting parked. Yeah, yeah exactly. With parked up, walking, parked. Yeah, exactly. Taking photos, like, exactly. and that's that's the pressure of the trade as well. Um, but it, it's good in both. If you're a sick painter, you're sick. Yeah. Painter, that means more business for you. For you, that's right. Hundred percent. If you're middle in your 
it. Yeah, it's going to show. It's going to show. Definitely. You, and your business is just going to be but like. That's the hard thing I found yeah. with paint. People are super particular with their, their their paint jobs, right? But also, not any. A lot of people don't actually know what good paint is. Yeah, and or what, what goes into it. Yeah, what goes into it. And also, yeah. what I've realized as well with, with the younger crew, not so much the older older crew, because I've seen um, my dad build cars for hundreds of people. Mm. You know, right from the demographic, like younger de- yeah. demographic to the older demographic. I think it's the young kids, uh, the young guys like us that are still in the learning curve of like. Yeah. The only reason why I'm I know what I know now process, is because yeah. I've gone through the. Painting my, a full my, car. My, my broke boy face of doing three thousand yeah. dollar vinyl wrap jobs off gum tree. Then I doing things twice, three times. Doing, you just doing, done it once, right? Doing five k paint jobs and then finally, like you know, Realizing. doing it right and realizing right. that you should be paying fourteen to twenty k exactly to get it done right. Yeah, and you know I did mean? a fourteen k one, and I was like, this is like. What should have happened from the beginning? From the start. From yeah. the start, Look, yeah. we all learn. I learned, yeah. I learned the hard way many a times, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I found with the younger with the younger crew, it's hard to get them to understand the actual amount of work that goes into it yeah. to getting the results that you want, you know, yeah. every single time. What is the amount of work that is th- that goes through it, you know? But like, because some people don't, some, some of these young guys, they like, you and I both had this conversation the other day, actually. I think... Um, we're talking about respraying my car again, the same color, but you and I are both aware that the prices that I did my my last paint job was I think three years ago, full full car, closed door, no jams, fourteen k. Yeah. Uh, three years before that, it was five k. So the jumps is good. Yeah, it's it's, it's right? a crazy jump. And there's been a jump since then. then yeah, absolutely. Till now. Absolutely. So like, I remember you quoted me. You're like, yo, Gav, I reckon if we wanted to do like a job that you would be happy, happy like, with, that yeah. I would be happy with, it. and you knew my like what kind of standard I was, I was after. It was going to be like a minimum 14k, and so, and it's 14k, which is the same price as the time last time. But that was 14k for color change. It's just 14k for the same, the same color. color. Yeah, so that's right. It's a it's roughly a bit more expensive because there's not as much prep work, but the cost of everything has gone up. Exactly. So, but why is it why is it now surpassed the five digit mark? I mean, they always they they, they always have been even yeah. even MS even you know Look, factory you can, dealers you and can stuff. You work with a budget, right? You can work with a budget, but you have to pull the pin somewhere on the bill. You have to, 100%. You have to stop somewhere. Yeah. You know? So pe- people have to say a budget. Of, they only want to spend ten grand on a paint right? job. Yeah. On a paint job, you get up to that ten grand worth of labor and and, and product. You're not going to do any more. You can't well, do any more. You can't do any more. You can't do any more. Or else you're not a business. You're not making any you're money. Charity, right? so, bro. But yeah. in saying that, when you get to that ten grand point, if it's not at that customer's expectation of what they think ten grand should look like, then you're gonna have a difference in difference in the end. You know what I mean? But, so that's that's really tricky though. So how do you navigate how do you that? Dictate that. How do you, well, di- how do you di- from the get go? Like this is gonna pay me a deposit, and he and I both are aware of the outcome that's gonna be. Like yeah. if, if you, like if I pay you five k for a paint job, and 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 it comes out like a bit orange peely, I gotta hit it with like. A two you have t- to detail it yourself. I, I, I hit it with like a like not not just like a not just like a finishing cut. I'm talking like I need like yeah, wet rub it, polish wet rub it, that shit. Yeah. yeah, I need microfiber cutting pads. Yeah, and you know I'm gonna do like a three stage just, on this. It's just the amount of work that goes into it, and the, yeah. the cost of product is just through the roof at the moment, man. Yeah. Every, getting everything in, we don't make anything here. You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't make any products yeah. here. Most of it's bought in, so we just yeah. pay top dollar. You know? Yeah. Um, so you're you're charging those prices because you're paying so much in materials. And then the rest is just your labor. That's right. Yeah. That's basically it. But yeah. There's a lot of labor. In there the is a lot of labor. Yeah. yeah. And we're a small team as yeah, well. I, yeah. I work alone majority of the time, ninety eight percent of the time. I have a young uh, a young boy in at the moment, yeah, Jacob. I saw him. He's yeah. absolutely awesome. He's yeah. he's great. He works a couple of days a week. Um, but the job's not for everyone. You no, know? It's the not. job's not for everyone. You have to take your time. We're not in a rush. We're just trying to get the job done mm. right. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, that's where we're at now, man. So bro, you. You, that, that R34 matches one. So that was one of the first cars you actually did, panel shop. Moving yeah. Moving wheel shops, and now you're doing panel work. Yeah. And I noticed where I've seen you do Lamborghinis and, you know, these R34s. And I was wondering, like, is it the same amount of, amount of work or, like, with the materials and prices? Is it the same between Lambos and JDM cars? Yeah. Spot on, man. You're, you're pretty much spot on there. Yeah, it's exactly the same. It's the same. The processes are the same. Like people spin out when they see like a Lambo sitting at, at the shop. Mm. Um, they spin out like, oh, what are you doing to this? It must be crazy. It must be wild. But it's exactly the same process, man. I'm It'll, taking it through as off. Yeah. It needs Facing it. it. It needs some needs a rear lip or a front yeah. lip. It's the same as it's the same fiberglass as that skyline outside. It's all the same. Doesn't it, matter. It, might, it might just be ABS plastic. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't and really you know, matter. Yeah, it, yeah. It, you get to the point where the car's just the cars you know you just yeah. get the job done how yeah. it needs to be done so yeah as for mitch's skyline that kicked off the panel the panel work and the body kits and stuff like that once that hit the road 
And um, he started to put the word out that I got it done and got it to fit nicely. Um, people just started bringing them down, man. Just started bringing one after 100%. the other. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing too. It wasn't just about my paint that I, I cared about when I got my first paint job. It was, um, pardon me, it's actually when I got my car back. Um, because when I did the paint job, I actually had like a full new uh, front front bumper, side skirt, rear bar, diffuser, everything. So really they're only painting the doors. They didn't have to paint the trunk. Yep. It was um, full carbon and I wanted to keep it exposed. Exposed, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, the other um, customer that you want, someone yeah. who comes prepared, you know, comes yeah. with all the right parts, yeah, co comes, exactly. comes ready but to rock, what, and they know and what and they, they want. Get stuff. Vince, bumper gaps, bro. Disgusting, Everywhere? Disgusting, yeah. dude. Ronald McDonald car, my <laughs> G. Disgusting, was bro. That, uh, was that on you with, like, uh, yeah. crappy aftermarket parts, or was no, that No, bro, shop? I bought genuine parts, bro. I bought, like, OEM, BMW front bars, just like- And still bro, garbage? Bro, mid is an understatement, bro. <laughs> like, it was so bad. Like, they didn't even have, like, the right hardware on it. Like one, like the, the clips, like, you know, the front bumper, how it sits like this and then the fender and the bumper connects together. Yep. Dude, it was hanging off sideways. So my front bumper isn't sitting straight. It's, yeah, it's, droop, it's drooping. It's, it's, it's bro, yeah. awful, disgusting. Look, given it is a European car, so. Yeah, yeah. and then like, <laughs> and then I went to like another shop and then I said to him like, dude, regardless of what the bill is, pay for every single nut and bolt. Yeah, Whatever missing bolt is on the fender, get buy, it right. buy it. If there's a bracket missing, buy it. Like, yeah. I think like when you start getting up to that build process, it's like that's where you have to be. You have yeah. to just cover all your bases. Exactly, you've done dude. the right thing, showing yeah. up with all your panels, yeah, bringing everything exactly. in how you want it. That yeah. makes things so much but then, easier. But then for you, you also know that there's guys that bring in made in China rep parts. Oh, that's what I deal with ninety eight percent of the time. Exactly. Yeah. So do you do you, you, you give them a, like, hey, just the FYI, this is not gonna this fit. Is trash, yeah. yeah, this this yeah. kit is mid. Yeah, definitely. You cheaped out. And when I put this thing on, Definitely. don't it expect no sense. It happens majority of the time. Yeah. The, 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 the hardest part was I saved a few fiberglass bumpers that were literally like torn in two, like just broken. Also, smashed. for those who don't know, fiberglass words suck. I, I yeah. don't, I, there's, I've never met a painter or any prep guy, anyone who works in a paint shop who is, who goes or smiles when they say, <laughs> I'm going to do a fiberglass job. Yeah. Everyone guy, hates you, it. Dude, this guy is so happy to do fiberglass. <laughs> I don't know anyone that like, do you know any painter that likes fiberglass jobs? No, it's dude, like the no. worst thing. I don't know. I, it's messy. Everyone says the same thing. Yeah. I don't mind working with it. I feel like it's just, it's, it's, it's Play-Doh compared to plastic. Plastic is like just junk, man. You can't, you can barely modify it. You can't add anything onto it. You can't take anything yeah. away from it. You yeah. over sand it, it goes furry and you can't paint it. Yeah. Um, for us, like low Fiberglass sand guys, is like, yeah. I can make something out of nothing. If this is yeah. 20 mil short, 30 mil short, 40 mil short, we can lay up some sheets and extend things and make yeah. things fit and you can work it almost feels like play-doh you know mm. like it's you, you can work with it on the flip side it's super fragile it's mm -hmm. rigid if you hit it once like that's it spiderweb bro gone you know yeah. it's so hard to little, prep little, it's little explosion it's transparent yeah. it cracks easy yeah. there's so many like red flags when it comes to fiberglass but, but someone has to do it yeah you know? someone has to do it and, <laughs> someone the, has to and do it. this poor sucker yeah. like he bought a I'm fiberglass bumper yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm that dude i'll fix it man I'll, I'll go to hell and back to get this uh shitty ass bumper yeah. bar on your car i don't dude. really care and then you got people complaining about prices it's like bro yeah like, that's where it's hard like it's like that's I don't, I don't like, want to be like, yo, you see what I do for the job. Like. Oh, man. I've done things behind the scenes for people's parts that they, they wouldn't even have any clue, man. Like, I've dude. quoted them at the jump, at the start, and then I start sanding this bumper bar you back, it through, and it's like, like, dude, I dug myself a hole. Yeah, yeah, or you take the bumper off the car, and it's held together on the back by, like, double-sided tape and, like, oh my. you know, gaffer tape. And they failed to tell you. They didn't tell you that, you yeah. know? Um, so yeah, I've, I've gone, th I've gone through it trying to help and trying to save these parts. Oh yeah. Cause once you take the bar off, it's like, wait, I'm not going to put it on like that. Yeah. Well, force off, it's my fault now. And most of the time the, Damn, the, the, the jab cars, they're put together with like hopes and dreams. Yeah. Bro. Like a toy toys <laughs> kit of nuts and bolts or whatever their dad had laying in the garage. Just grab any random nuts and bolts. And that's how they get put Cable together. Ties. Cable ties, random Dude. 10 mils, eight mils, Allen key. Like it's all just a mix match, you know? Oh. So when we're putting them back together, we're trying to get them it's sort of like a restoration at this it point because they're is. all so like, yeah. you know, yeah. they're all so wrecked these cars majority yeah. of the time. And then how do you even know which one is the OE bolt to go and buy you replacements? Don't. You, you don't. You um, don't. Yeah, I usually go and we'll change all the hardware and put new hardware in when I'm, when I'm yeah. putting one together just so I can sleep at night knowing that bolts aren't going to break, bolts aren't going to come loose, everything's mm. buttoned up, everything's locked tighter where it needs mm. to be because they're, 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 they can be an absolute shit show, these cars now. A lot of, they're, they're normally owned by P-platers. Yep. So everyone wants to try something on the car themselves yep. and they'll do it at home and yep. it'll be a half job and then it ends up at our shop and we end up rectifying it. Yeah. You know, so. For those who don't know and that are like, don't actually know what a P-plate license is, a P-plate license is essentially you're 18 and you're 21 and 
you're restricted for driving like super quick cars, turbo cars, high high power cars. Yeah. Any car that's you're fun, basically that's, a any new. car that you think is fun. Yeah, you can't about drive it. it. You yeah, ain't yeah, driving yeah, it. Yeah. 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 And you're going to get reamed if you do, basically. Yeah, exactly. But there's a loophole for it. But we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so most, most of them are heavily modified and um, most of the time molested, you know. They're, they're not in the best shape. No. Um, and they don't have the biggest budgets either. Exactly. That's yeah. going back to that. In that, that, that 20 to 25 mm. pocket, you know, it's hard. It's hard It's hard working with people's 100%. budgets. Um, but, yeah, I've been that dude, man. That dude that you can bring it bring it to and rely on to just get, get, get it done. Get 100%. it on the car. But going back to his question... With with Skylines and Labos coming to your shop, it is not very common for these type of cars to just fall to any shop, yeah? Yep. Like these owners, you're a new shop, and Mitch just comes out to you out of nowhere. I don't know if it was because, you know, he, he came to you because you know him, or because you guys have a relationship. Already. No, we had no relationship before painting. No relationship, yeah. right? Your life in cars, you were a big time attack guy. You, you and your dad did a lot of racing and stuff like that. Time attack guy, you are racing for times. Tell me about your life. Then, like, did, was any networking done there to help get the clients that you have today? Because your clientele seems, I'm not, I'm not, try, I'm not trying to group you into a specific clientele, but you don't get, uh, what would we call it, NPC cars, we'll say. You're not going to get a high nah, yeah, everyday car. No, yeah, Hyundai i is going to come in, nah. baseline, and be like, you know what I mean? You, nah. you, you'll get, like, a R34 GTST, you'll get, like, a 32 GTI, you'll get a 180, yeah. but then you'll get, like, an M4, I see M5, I see dudes with GLC 62 AMGs, yeah, yeah, all the Euros G wagons. That's not everything. The, the, you, you, the, get, you, you get the such same. Such a wide demographic of cars. But, but yeah. it's actually the same because these Japanese cars are ah, the, the AMGs of. It's, yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. same tax bracket, yeah, bro. Exactly. Like, dude, the, the, these cars aren't 5, 10K. Well, look, I'll shout out know. the homies around me, man. The shops around me have just been so supportive. Yeah. Um, Adex Detailing yep. in Telemarine. Eddie yep. is an absolute gentleman. Yep. He has a, a flow of cars that go through his shop that are Crazy. unmatched, unmatched, yeah. you know? I know, I actually, I, I don't actually know of him, but I actually know some of his clientele. Yeah. When I was in my sales days, he does not just like, he, dude. No, the he's the goat. The trust, <laughs> he is the goat he when is it comes to detail. I, yeah. I, I, I have a client, actually, shout out to him. He's actually, if I grow up and I get like money, money, like this dude, like crazy money, I actually hope I grow up like this guy. His name's Sam Bashery. Nicest, nicest guy you'll ever meet in your life. Like, Super genuine guy. Um, he's not just aerating, aerating money like yep, most, yep. most people who do just have cash and that's the only thing that they're good for. He actually um, had an allocation for a brand new Lamborghini STO, the one that you saw, the full carbon with the gold and stuff. That's his car. He got a brand new from Lamborghini, dropped it straight off the ADEX. Straight and away, it's like, yeah. Straight away. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's like, you, I don't the, me at amount all. Of, the amount of trust you must have yeah. to drop your car off, to ADEX detailing, I don't even care. Give him an open book. Yeah, go for do it. Do a man. detail of a car that has 11 kilometers on it. On it yeah. Do a full PPF on it. Yeah, bro, you need it for marketing and photo shoots. Yeah, man, I'll give Done. that to you. Yeah. Like, he's a chill. Nah, Eddie, Eddie, yeah, Eddie has smashed it, man. And, um, He's he, he's only around the corner from me. He's yeah. been the biggest blessing. Um, he'll he puts you me. on for a lot of clients. Oh, and stuff. He puts me on every single day. We Shout speak every him. single day. Yeah. Um, on the way to work, I'll have a missed call from Eddie already. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So good. Um, so yeah, he's plugged He's like in. a coworker, but non-coworker. Literally, man. Literally. and uh, CEO coworker vibes. To, to, to segue yeah. towards Eddie, the shop next door to Eddie is mm. coming up available for Lee's uh, mid next yeah. year. So we plan to hopefully touch wood, um, yep. move in side by side. side yeah. So we'll be sharing, sharing, a, hopefully sharing a wall. Which is great because you don't have to go do pickups. That's all, well, I'm, I'm around there like four or five times a week and he's a yeah. reminder four or five times a week, picking yeah. up this, picking up that, dropping off I that. I see that because I, I come to you quite a bit yeah. where I come to like scan some cars, and there's always back, people there, yeah. do something for my own car even. Yeah. I always see ADEX or I see you wrapping things to take to them. Yeah, yeah it's always back and forth. Yeah. There's like three or four shops around in, in a close yeah. vicinity where we all just feed the beast, For, you know? Is, is Faulkner still like, you still, you still working? Faulkner's in the loop. Yeah. Faulkner's the plug for yeah. tires, man. Yeah, plug that's so wheels. good. Yeah, I sent, I, religiously I send everyone there. Yeah. It's pretty much like a family You sent me there, there actually. Yeah. I, I sent everyone there. Man. It was a weekend and I'm like, yo, it's Saturday. I got a puncture. Yeah, what am I going to do it? Dude. And he's actually an honest guy because if it was any other tire shop, they would have charged you, you, you know and done the happened? repair. He would have. It didn't go through, did it? it no. Didn't pierce it, yeah. yeah, he told you that, right? He, sent, he told he me. Told me he's yeah. like, dude, it pierced sideways. But they're the sort of people but that I've been like I'm aligned be with. You know, I, these dudes I, I, are good dudes. I'm, you know? I'm, I'm gonna be honest, brother. If it was me and my dad's shop, I would have charged the. <laughs> I would have charged thirty five bucks still. There you go. <laughs> no, you go. but not because I wanted to. No. Because the car went inside. Yeah, something got done. Technicians looked at it for half an yep, hour yep, yep. and it came out. You know, in the it's, in respectfully, the it should have been my fault. I should have pulled it out first, but 
me and him when no, I was going I'm, check I'm him I'm not going to pull it out no, we'll with a cup two tyres no, no, no. and then just deflate on the middle of the street, no, bro. No, no. NPC moves, bro. No, yeah, no, no way. Thing. And Abs, Abs is in his in his pocket as well. He knows yeah. what he's doing, you know. He knows 100%. that there's potential work, there's potential yeah. know, jobs that can get done. Yeah. And he sees that, you know. So Well, right after when he didn't actually charge me, I invite, I, the first thing I was like, yo, you, you, we need you for the drift event. There man. you go, man. You yeah, know what I mean? Um, But yeah, like... Going back to you, sorry, um, I, I I forgot about your question about the tire tax. Like, what car were you actually racing? Um, because the story that you told me is actually sick, dude. But yeah. this is actually no. You, you told me the story like months ago. Yeah, well, um, Dad had the Group C race car, yep. wide body race car, and we we're going to Winton Sandown yeah. all around. Just, just I, the locals. Yeah. yeah, I was going with him. You know, I wasn't. Philip really, Island. Philip, he loves Philip Island. Yeah. We have a beach house down at Philip Island, so that's uh, our that was our vibes. local. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, the garage is only like three k's from the track, so sick. we're just always so there, good. Right? Um, and I was going with him, watching him race, and the bug just bit, man. I wanted to go yeah. fast, you know. Yeah. Um, I had a little Mazda 3 MPS, a, a Series 1 MPS. There was a street car, actually. Uh, it was stance, dumped on wheels. Faulkner Wheels and Tires sponsored the car. Yep. So yeah. I would slap a set of wheels on the car, take it to a car meet, talk to someone, sell that set of wheels to them, tell them to meet me back at Faulkner, Chuck them on their yeah. car, grab a new set from the shelf, yeah. chuck them on the car. The following week, I'd go to another meet. Yep. And it was just like a cycle where yeah. wheels would go on this car and yep. then I'd sell them. And it, yep. I think we went through like seven or eight sets in like maybe six or seven months on That's that car. Crazy. And they were just getting fitted, sold, fitted, sold. sold. So I'd fall in love with the set. Yeah. And then it would just, he'd be like, Omar would ring me, like, bro, come in, your wheels are sold. Did he let you race in the wheels that he gave you or no? Nah, so, no, okay, so, cool. I was so gonna say, the like, car was stancy for a yeah, little bit. Yeah. It was like dropped, it was dropped, and it was like yeah. all the. All, your your you know? daily driver street stands by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's sort of what got me into the scene, you know. That's what was the car I was Same as me, yep. and talked like that's what get yeah. talking to people and stuff. Um, start off with the cool looking car. Yeah. Then now you want power. Exactly. And so now you want to drive stick. With the power. We started going down yeah. the power route. So like front mount into cooler, yeah. high Bolt, flow Boltons. turbo. Not yeah. So we I went to uh, a good mate of mine has a fab shop, TBM Custom Fab Morgan, yep. who's an absolute genius yep. when it comes to metal. And I'm not even talking about automotive genius. This guy is just a genius. Yeah. Like he's worked for the museums in China. He's worked that's for Disney. Crazy. Land. The dude makes like articulated robot dinosaurs and. He's a wizard, bro. Wizard, man. Like, bro. you know what I mean? Like, when you talk to him, you feel like stupid. You know, that's the sort of person he is. Mr. Potter, is that you? Exactly. So, <laughs> so we've been close friends for for many years. So he, he he was a friend of my dad. So, um, he said to me, he's like, "Give me the car, give me the car, and I'll just do, do all the work. I'll do exhaust, yeah, intake, everything." Is he a car guy though? He's a car guy. That's man. why. He's okay, I was gonna say like a bro, he's like a Datsun dude. He's okay, he, he's okay, built some like crazy. Like, if you're doing like corporation work, no, that's no, like no, big well, dollars. Yeah, he, he's a car guy. But like, if you're just a car guy, he just he just wants like. No, he's a car guy. He's a fabricated car guy that just if you're loves fabricating making stuff. Yeah, you know if you're I mean? fabricating car stuff, or oh, then that's what you love. I well, think he would you, enjoy that than doing like corporation. Dude, when your skill set is like making articulated dinosaurs and you're making an exhaust, you're gonna be pretty bored on the exhaust. You know what I mean? It's like light work for you. Yeah. So he took the car anyway. We 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 the car out yeah man. you started Inter building it building went ballistic interior out two racing seats and a steering wheel that's all was in there yeah you know the car was decked out front to back did you have a cage no cage we didn't yeah. get to the cage stage yet yeah. right we're getting there yeah. we're getting there so we did a few test days we did one test day in the second car was okay needed a tune when is it all? Is that thing all wheel drive? Front wheel, front wheel, front wheel drive. Front okay, front wheel, front wheel, unfortunately, front wheel, which was my first mistake. That's yeah, first mistake yeah. learning about racing. Well, like, no, it's just you, you have to drive real differently. Like, yeah, it's a different style of I driving. I think if I were to drive front wheel drive right now, I would suck. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. I, if you got a Hyundai I've XL been, and you you you're having fun with 100 horsepower or 120 horsepower, great fun. You know, bro, when you start pushing, hot, cracking, 100 Civic, 100 100 kilowatts, and it's plenty. 900 you know? kg. Yeah, there you go. If the racetrack's like. A minute twenty, minute thirty, minute yeah. forty long. So once we had Fun. the car, once we had the car tuned, it didn't even make that much power. I mean, like two fifteen kilowatts at the front. What was the torque you know? like? Oh, it was ballistic. Yeah, like, it literally been crazy. Just, just punching boost. on with this thing. Where did boost kick in? Oh, pretty much straight away. Like it had, three, it had three just K. Had a high flowed stock turbo. So oh, you so you kick in like three instant, three K, instant. three five maybe. Yeah, and we had all the like uh, the steering yeah, shit unplugged yeah, yeah, yeah. and all the because it had all these like uh, restrictions like on the MPS yeah. you can't. Go full throttle while the wheels turn. Oh, Just really? Talk steer issues. You know, oh, so front wheel drive vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all tuned, so it cuts out and stuff. So Did you have LSD in that? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah so, well. so we've disconnected everything. This car is just raw. So it doesn't, it, does, it, does it still peel? Yeah, yeah. Really? And, but there's, Left or right? There's no help to the right every single oh, time. Yeah. Damn, so, um, the yeah. Golf, my, my, my punish detail was pulling to the left. Left? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're all really different. Yeah. But the NPS was just a real hard, like, angry pull to the right. Your Civic just goes in a straight, straight line. Straight line, yeah. <laughs> that thing doesn't pull you. Yeah, at all, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Straight. Ah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> 50 meters, 
<laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, we ended up getting it tuned up in I think a horsepower factory in yep, yep. the car. Yep. Well, dudes, man, we drove it up there like on the freeway, me and my fabricator Morgan, and um, the car's just empty, nothing inside. You're staring at exhaust, <laughs> fresh exhaust. <laughs> yeah, dude. No tune, so it was running yeah. like rough as guts. We couldn't even come on boost. No carpets. Like, nothing, man. Yo. It was empty, so yeah. we just had to limp this thing to Dandenong. Driving ten can. So Saturday, Saturday day, they they finished the tune. I picked yeah. it up that day, brought it home, straight back to the workshop, straight onto the straight onto the trailer. Yep. So we had dad. Are you running ninety eight still? Yeah, still yep. ninety eight. So we had dad's. Dad's got a tow truck, a Mazda tow truck. Yeah, pretty cool to see, man. We had a Mazda tow truck with a Group C RX seven mm-hmm. on the top, and then a trailer hooked up to the tow truck yep. with my yep. MPS on the back. So it was just like. That's craziest, crazy, so yeah, crazy yeah. setup, yeah, what, crazy room. crazy setup. So anyway, we get there day one, like, like racing we're, day we're, one. We're professional racer type vibes. We're set now. Yeah. You know? we're, we're, we're me and Dave were like geared up. Yeah, man. Like, we're, we're excited. Like let's 100%. race, man. Yeah. Um. So anyway, a couple of sessions in the morning it was pretty good. The weather was great. The weather was great at Sandown. It was a beautiful day. And then everyone wants to take a ride in the car. Everyone wants to come. My mates want to come in. My missus wants to come in. So yeah, I was yeah. doing little hot passenger laps, passenger yep. laps with people. Um, and then it's the sad they don't do passenger laps anymore. Yeah, well, they do every second second session you can do a passenger lap. Well, yeah, it's probably more ideal not to have a passenger, to be honest, because because yeah. uh, you're not there to not sh- not not long after. Yeah. Dad hopped in. It was like the last, probably one of the last sessions of the day. Yeah, and my missus was actually going to jump in with me, and Dad goes, "No, no, no!" He goes, "You've already been." He says, "I want to go with Junior. I want to go yeah. with Junior." So yeah. we jump in. Anyway, we do a few laps, and I notice it's starting to get overcast in the back side of Sandown. And the clouds started to roll in. Then yeah. The drizzle started to Classic come. Classic Melbourne. Classic Melbourne. Within within six minutes of a twenty minute session, it started to rain. So we had semi full semi slick, dry semi slicks on at the time. And uh, I remember the lap before coming around the back down the back straight. Mm-hmm. I'm doing probably 120, 130. and this the back straight that goes into turn one again. Uh no, the the, the far back one that the, goes through the Escher yeah, and then but, to the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So turn four. So I've come onto the re- back straight, yep. and this Evo ten or nine or whatever they are, the, the newest yep. one, yep. ten or whatever 10, it is, yep. just comes absolutely blazing. Past. Yeah, but, but that's because in he's turn, all drive. That's because yeah? turn two and three, dude. He's all the, the, the S's. He can probably just go over the curb. He, he, he just hit the curb and yeah, eat yeah, it. Yeah. So the all drive just comes yeah, blasting past, yeah. and dad's dad's like. Look, this thing's quick, yeah, man, you know? Yeah. And the front wheel drive is just all over the place. <laughs> You're just rain. slipping, bro. So the next 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 lap, we sort of catch back up to the yeah. Evo. And then as we come onto the back straight, we both just, bah, just pressed on it, yeah? And we're coming, and he's got in front of me like that. And then I'm watching the Speedo 150, 160, and we're coming up to the S's. Yeah. And I was just gearing down, grab third, and my dad just goes to me, as soon as I grab third... He gra- looked at me and goes, don't lift, don't lift, just hold it flat. Oh, right. yeah, I know, yeah. Because yeah. on that straight, I can hit 200 on that. Yeah, I, I know what, goes, I know what you're don't doing. Lift. Yeah, you don't lift. Don't yeah. lift. So I've, I've, I've grabbed yeah. third, grabbed fourth, grabbed fifth, and the rear right just hit the ripple strip. Oh! And the car. I, I, no, so the ripple strip is b- The ripple strip is not a ripple strip. It's, it's a lump. It, it's it, a speed hump. It's literally <laughs> a paint strip with a small lump and. <laughs> Every single rock and debris you can think of. If you touch, if you're you, gone, the, the yeah. one wheel touches it, and you yeah. hear the rock swing up, That's you it, lost you're traction, gone, yeah. bro. Yeah. Well, we're coming down, and it goes through an S like that. Yeah. So there's a ripple on the right. So I've come left. Mm-hmm. Dad said to me, don't lift, don't lift, don't lift. Yeah. So I'm holding this thing. Pin, yeah. And I've gone like that, just come right, and my right rear just, just glanced it. Just glanced it, and the car just started just floating. <laughs> I was literally like, you know when you get hit with a shell in my yeah. car? Just like, <laughs> yeah. spinning like that? Jeez. It was just spinning. Bro. We hit the grass, and we sped up. Yeah. And then I look down and I just see the thing still at 150. My wheels are still going. Yeah. And then we turn like that, and all I remember is saying, Boom! 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 Straight, oh, into, it, straight into the wall, nose first, and yeah. we just spun. We just spun. Is this the wall that's like here? And then if you kept, if you finish these two turns, you can enter the pits, right? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So, no, no, along the back straight, there's that S, and there's just a wall there. Oh, and yeah. Hard yeah, yeah. The runoff, yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so we've spun, and we've just gone nose straight into the tires. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know which exactly you're talking about. Yeah. concrete. So then I've like sort of come to the cars just Dude. exploded at the front and I yeah. look to the side and my dad's just oh, oh he's not shit. Done. He's yeah, he's slumped, out, he's out clean, bro. Slumped. Like yes. and I'm trying to get my harness off, trying yeah. to smoke is just like coming out yeah, of the, the bro, front. It's crazy it's crazy. Shit, dude. I, my door was because it was such a hard impact, everything yeah. was crumpled back. It's like the car it was not a car. Oh no, it was gone. So nah, dude. I've kicked my door open. And it looked like looking at my it dad. like he was playing BMG, bro. Yeah, it was gone. <laughs> and I saw looked back at my dad and he was just like KO, just gone. Yeah. And I, I was thinking to myself, my old man. Like, yeah, I, I, wrote, like, I wrote my dad off, bro. bro. I'm outside of the car, like Shit. my car's gone. I've just spent like how much money and time on the car? Over the last two days. My dad's gone. <laughs> I looked at things, you know? <laughs> 
Um, so anyway, run around to the other side of the car, grab the door. He's like, ripping this, ripping yeah. this thing open. It would not come open, man. And then I just hear him howling in the car. He's yeah. come to and he's just screaming, like yeah. screaming. You know, and you, I, 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 you don't see your yeah, dad. You don't yeah, hear or see nah. your dad in pain. You yeah, know? you don't, bro. And I, I was in shock as well. So yeah. anyway, I've, I've ripped this door open. Are you for fire marshal yeah, to trying come, trying to wave the ambulance, down. Ambulance yeah. first. Who cares about yeah. the ambulance? Yeah. You know? So we get him up out of the car and his arm is just like, man, it's yeah. just, <laughs> you know? Dude. Yeah. Um, so they get him in ambulance. Anyways, he gets taken to the pits and then I'm trying to resolve my car issue. And I, see, <laughs> I see this, I see this Navara like pull up. This guy's thinking like, the king, No, bro. because like, you know, if you make a mess at the track or yeah. you wreck the arm code, you have to pay for it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah you pay by, you pay meter, for Meter, man. Like, like, pay it, meter. Yeah, like it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And the, 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 the tarmac as well, if you wreck the actual track surface, you have to pay for that surface yeah. to be re- By the meter. Yeah, yeah by so the meter. anyway, I'm like looking back at my car and I see this Navara just pull up to it, yeah? yeah. And he just whips out a strap, chucks it on the back of his car and, and, and just puts it on the front of mine. <laughs> and he's just trying to rip this thing from yeah. the grass onto the track. He goes, I'll drag it back to the pits. I said, mate, there's like five, 600 meters to go. I said, I'm not a millionaire. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to be able to resurface this, yeah. this thing. I yeah. said, the, the sump's on the ground, mate. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. I untook the hitch. I said, we'll get a tow truck. Yeah. Just wait. Just hang tight. Let the session end. Yeah. And it became a bigger thing than what it was. You know, they stopped yeah. the session, stopped every yeah. ambulance. Out. Which sucks for a lot of people, but that's that's how it is, right? Oh, man, it is it is what it is, you know? Um. So, yeah. So, they end up getting the car off the track and we ended up at the hospital. Yeah. So, we're just at the hospital for, for, for yeah. a day or two with dad. He actually just shattered his his shoulder. The the blade was just in like yeah. pieces, man. After that, we, did you kept racing? No, nah, nah, for me, yeah. that was. It's it. also super expensive too because you were doing it as a hobby, right? Well, yeah, we're doing, I was doing it as a hobby, and I was just starting painted as well. Oh, so it was you, you, you can't afford to allocate like no, four, s- five, ten thousand dollars for no, a track. Straight bed. away, I was like, man, we just spent how much on the car? It's all gone now. We spent all this money on getting the car right. It was Regard- distracting. Even as well. let's be honest, bro. Even if the if, even if you finish driving the car at the end of the day. Right, it's a daily, yeah. Yeah. So you would have gone off the track day, go go back, take your car to the shop, oil change, yeah, bro, cat brakes, take this, take, take, take this clips off, take your ceramics off, take yeah. take your take your squealy brakes out, everything, put yeah. your stock ones on, even though because you know your ceramic brakes are like. Oh, super to be honest, loud. man, I'll, in between like uh, racing and um, there you go. You, you I was it. driving it exactly like track As ready. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I was driving it exactly bro, the same. I did that for a bit, but. I feel like I, I'm just so embarrassed when I pull up to the stop sign nah. and my car was around. Yeah, 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 dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm out here just trying to e brake and yeah. everything using the car. No, I love that, man. But then, like, I love people looking, like, peeping in and just seeing, like, one bride, just yeah. one bride seat sitting there, me sitting there like this, and nothing else in the car. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, always, yeah. I, I think looking for you and yoga would have been sick, but I had an E92. I'm going to try and find a photo for the thing so you guys can actually see it. The E92, there's a door so long. When you look at the mirror, bro, I look like I'm sitting f-ing close. Real to close it. to it? So close, yeah, bro. Yeah. I look like I need to be like six foot to, yeah, like, no, the to drive small, this car. So exactly. So the, you, you got a B pillar too, yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the B pillar is like blocking you. Yeah, it's fine. I had no B pillar. So it was just like me here. Awkward and as the fuck. door's like <laughs> over here, bro. I'm like, dude, no way. Yeah, so that was my racing. Um, career wrapped yeah. up within uh, two, three sessions. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Now going back to your actual shop, yeah. Um, was, did, did you have any like, what was your like favorite build over the years? Favorite build I painted? There's been so many, man. It could, could be anything, it could just be wheels, it could just be a full, it could be a full yeah. build. Look, I loved Mitch's, Mitch's SSRs, something so simple as like a silver that just never had been done, you know, up against yeah. a nice polished lip. It's um, not just any silver though, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not any silver, it's that's, custom that's, that's silver. That's yeah. why it's like mm. Yeah, spot on. That's yeah. why it hits. Um stuff that stands out, it's a lot of the metal flake work. I just sprayed for um a dude named Zach who's mm. who's got a drift car, JZX. He he's actually sprayed his his VSXX uh centers in yeah. like a what do you call it? Like reptile, lizard skin, green, yellow, sort of flippy flake. I sort of what color? is the color combination? What is this? What is this color combination? Well, the flakes like? actually called it's a uh, paint huffer metal flakes okay. in uh, America. Actually, what's, what, what's the what's the what's the body color of his car? Oh, the car is like a dark. It's a greeny black. It's that like JZX. It's like a black, but it almost looks greener. I think. Oh, it's, it's like, like an em- it's like an emerald yeah, almost. Like it looks yeah. black, but in the sun it sort of flips to a green. Yeah, like my car, but yeah, instead, so of, instead of purple blue, yeah, navy, so it's the like green. green flake really ties in. It yeah. actually looks good. Um, and then he bought me a roll cage as well to do. Mm-hmm. So the car's like. Wild man, all flaked cage, Dude, that's flaked so wheels. Sick. But there's been so many jobs over the years, man. Like I, I don't just paint automotive stuff. Mm. Like I paint uh, like those chopper bikes for people yep. in custom candy apple yep. colors. Yeah. Um, I'll literally paint anything, man. Yeah. Uh, in the early days when COVID was w- was hitting, I I went out and painted someone's house kitchen. You know, like oh, 
Yeah, yeah. like I'll, I'll the, the, the idea literally, of man. making ends meet. Bro. I literally had to had to had to had to make money. So I took my compressor, I loaded my whole car up, man. I went up, I masked up the whole house, their couch, their everything. Yeah, it down their kitchen and painted their kitchen. You know, like Crazy. it's just I'll paint whatever. I love the metal flakes and stuff and the custom paint. That's pretty yeah. much where it's at for me. 100%. I love that stuff. Love like I remember through flakes. high school, I'd have days off and I'd go to dad's shop and and, and paint skateboards and like I'll paint anything. You know, I just love yeah. painting stuff. So yeah. So yeah. what, the, what are you working on right now then? Like what's, what, what big projects are you working on? You told me actually yesterday about the ambulance stuff. Do you want to yeah. talk about that? Yeah, of course, man. Of course. Um, that's a, that's a, it's not a cool gig, but it's exactly, a, it's, a, it's a, it's a one that's neat. It's a, it's a necessity. It's, yeah, it's, an, it's necessary. And, mm. and I'm open to paint anything. That's yeah. the thing. That's why the business is called painted. Yeah. Because we, if you, if you, if you, if you had the word like automotive. Motive, yeah. You're sort of, you're sort of putting yourself in, in a that, box, in that yeah. box, you know, and I've never been in that box. I like painting yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, as I said, Dad would restore like the most random, yeah, even antiques. Like yeah. he'd, he'd polish up like tanks for old fire extinguishers. Yeah. So as long as he's thinking like it's a job, yeah, and it's cool. The, hour, you know? the, the amount of hours it's in, and I can still make some money on it. That's yeah. it. We'll paint whatever, man. Yeah, we'll restore whatever. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter if it's automotive. And or if not. you know how to, and if you know the price of doing it, that's sweet. it. Yeah. Well, at the moment we just got um, contacted by Ambulance Victoria. Well, well, a company that's working for Ambulance yep. Victoria. They're changing all the LED lights in the top of the ambulance throughout Victoria mm. and they need to f someone to paint them in a certain certain color so prep them paint them rebox them ship them out yeah um and that's something that we're trying to get at the moment which is yeah. we, which is which is a great job it's different it's not fun it's not sexy it's not cool no it's, it's not, not cool. it's not something that you post yeah, on Instagram yeah, it's not, something that, it's not know, like you're cool yeah. yeah people aren't going to get hyped up about it but it's something that I find really interesting because it's high volume you know yeah. um high volume there's there's it, it's for a client that wants things done absolutely perfectly mm. you can't have any any sort of you know 100%. has to be 100 percent. yeah because so, these are service vehicles at the end of the that's day. right yeah, yeah. and, and they come with vehicles and they need to be clean they need to be yep. hygienic the, yep. the surface needs they're, to be they're, ultra they're, clean they're, they're gonna get hit clean but with yeah alcohol exactly they're gonna get everything. blood splatter fluids so you know the chemicals that you yeah, you're using you have to consider that in yeah the that's right you don't want the, every time you wipe something it now this gloss is just now satin Matt, yeah satin all of a so sudden for the first time we're like doing tenders and we're, we're, we're putting in offers and we're trying to win this job you know and we have to we have to organize everything from packing mm. shipping sending prep paint the whole lot you know mm. um so we're stepping out of our wheelhouse now into the bigger jobs and trying to trying to just uh diversify the, mm. the company man so, bro, do you have any upcoming events? Because, uh, you know, you did the, the, the meet-up for the grand opening. Yeah, the next one, we were going to actually have another one this year because we did one mid-year last year, I think, mm -hmm. just as COVID was, like, slowing down and things were opening up. We did one called Operation Freedom, I think mm -hmm. it was, with Dead of Night, who's yep. my good friend Jorge. Um, and we all cruised to Geelong, actually. We, yeah. we, we, we met at the shop. And I think I missed out on that one. Yeah, yeah well, you weren't far off. To be I was. I was not yeah, far yeah, off. A couple months off. Yeah. But um, we all met at the shop in Killer Park, and we just rolled like I think it was like 50, 60 deep on the on yeah. the way to Geelong. You know, so, and like, it's look, crazy. Looking back in the rear view, and it's just like stacked. Yeah, you know? it was it was a sight to see. You Imagine know? if you had like a drone shot and you get to see that. Imagine you're just like a Someone kid, just like going. I was going to say, your you're kid, your your parents you just look you. right and just like, like GDR oh this God. that. Like it was just a constant. Yeah, it, was, it was for a few Ks, man. That's yeah. what was crazy. We had to even stop and like everyone bunch up and yeah, and, 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 and go again. Yeah, I had um, yeah, classic which was problem. awesome, man. We all pulled up at Geelong Waterfront. We all got some lunch and some burgers and yeah, um, ate some talk like, about talk about cars. Yeah, we all talked about. We pulled up at the skate park there, so some people skating around there push bikes yeah. and kids and families that was the, that was the last one yeah. we did um we're going to do another one this year although we realized that the new shop is coming soon you we may as well yeah we may as well wait hang tight people ask me every week mm. bro let's do let's do something like we can let's get let's get yeah. it going i want to bring the car out but i don't want to water it down too much i want to nah. wait we're going to move shops uh early next year into a new space so that space will be ultra clean yeah brand new brand new spray booth yeah and while it's and base, cleanness and like it's perfect for like it'll content stay, or whatever yeah it'll stay That's clean this, to this, this yeah. space, it, we're aiming to keep it uh, ultra clean really social media focused mm. media media focused um so yeah, that's that's the move for the next the next meet and next event will be held at the at a new space. Yeah. We plan to fill the street. Like we want to close down the street, you yes, know. Yes sir. Yeah. Dude, so tell me your first car, your forever car and your favorite car if money was no object. Well, first car, interesting interestingly enough was a Mazda 808 that we found out in the bush man overgrown really yeah who was owned by no one well my dad 
he's a Mazda hunter. He yeah, has yeah, yeah. connects and networks everywhere and people call him, Rick, there's a RX3 overgrown in a farm in Tullaruk. We just seen it from the side of the road. There's Go classic ask. Barnheim farm yeah, that's, that's, YouTube that's videos. That's, that's your dad? That's my dad. Dude, crazy. Um, so anyway, he told me one day, he goes, man, I found an 808 in the bush, 1500 bucks. Like, let's go get it. We'll yeah. build this one for you, you know? Yeah. Well, this will be your first car. So we went Beautiful. out there and the grass was literally growing inside like, inside of it, through the windows. Like it was just covered in grass. Oh, so we ripped it out. Dude. We ripped it out. We bought it back. And I always think I was 13 at the time. Yeah. About 13 or 14. Um, and me and dad just brought it back to the garage and we started building this thing. We just went nuts. Yeah. And then dad started networking and getting some uh, sponsors for the cars. And we started, we started just uh, building this car and, and Autobahn jumped on board. All these big companies were jumping on board. So that was my first car, man. We built a show car as my first car. Um, and we've still got it. It's still in storage. It's still Favorite car, FD RX-7. That's what I'm working towards right now. Um, literally, I haven't bought myself a car. I'm not messing around with a car. I'm not building a car at the moment. So I can uh, eventually secure an RX-7. That, that's that's my dream car they've, for sure. They've gone, so, they've gone up in price. So oh, man, it's ridiculous, now. man. It's like I went to look at one of my P's and I think it was like 24K for like a pristine mm. one. Mm. You know, now it's like 100K yeah, for a pristine yeah. one. So yeah, it's sort of gone a little bit out of reach, but I know in good time they'll come back down and uh, we'll find something nice and neat to secure. If money was no issue, oh, that's probably an FD as well, to be honest with yeah, you. Man. Yeah, just yeah. a wild FD. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go... Um, Anything too crazy. Um, I love the Mazdas, man. I love the roadies. They probably just have a big 20, 20B in it, you know? Oh, yeah. Probably a 100K motor in a 70K car, you know? Dude. Yeah, that's if money was no option. Mm. So that's me, man. So, yeah, what, what are you driving at the moment? At the moment, um, I actually sold my cars to, to, to get the business going. So at the moment, I've just got a daily driver, Mazda 6 wagon. Um, yeah, give, Mazda. yeah, another Mazda. Um, given it's slammed, it's slammed on its guts with wheels and tint and all that but it's just a daily nothing too serious at the moment um just to get me from working back and that's it a to B. Mm. that's it that's it that's all i need man get to the shop and home shop and home shop and home i guess that's a wrap so i'm gonna get through the ending thank you everyone dude it's a good podcast bro i broke bro. thank you so appreciate much appreciate that guys thank um you. yeah thank you guys look for tuning in and listening thank you for the support if you guys gone this far um but just before you we do wrap up Give us some information, bro. Where can people find you? Do you have a website? What's your Instagram? Yeah, you Where can, can people hit you up? How on, can people? On people socials, we're uh, painted underscore Melbourne on Instagram. If you yep. want to go see some cool, cool paints, some yep. cool shit. Something's happening every day on the story. So yes, sir. You'll be, you'll be entertained. Yes, sir. Come watch. Where are you located right now? Uh, Killer Park at the moment, and we won't be going far. We'll be in Tullamarine at the new shop. Cool. So right by the airport. Yeah, easy ass. Yo, thank you guys for joining in today at the Talk Motorsport Show. Thank you for having us, Ricky. Oh, bro. Thank you Thanks for joining. Me. Yo, if you guys want to see Ricky back when he gets his new shop in a couple of months, let us know. Let us know. Yo, drop comments. Give us a subscribe. Let us know if you guys want to see like you know more different automotive businesses, or you guys want to see more drivers. Let us know in the comment section below. Aside from that, guys, follow follow us at talkmotorsport.io at pretty much majority of social media platforms. Aside from that, guys, you guys have a good one, and we love you all. Peace and love. <laughs>